<laughs> no, not in that way. <laughs> but still, it's a different yeah. story. But For yeah, those yeah. listening, Sam just made the yes. Sing. Yes. <laughs> right, we'll jump in. We'll jump on in. Are we diving in? Are we diving. Do you want to do more preamble? No, go that's ahead. all your topics. I noticed. I put some stuff. I actually put some stuff in the notes. We could still. I know, but you know, we're on a short week this week, so we're, so we're just doing your stuff. We can do your stuff. Well, let's just not do all of it. <laughs> Whatever we do, don't do all of it. I'm excited for the yodel story. <laughs> yeah. This is what maybe maybe we should say that for the Patreon because that's like that's like a, a Mike life question. No, it's not. We're not. We're not. We're not. We'll, Some we'll, added content. We'll, we'll give that to the uh, for the people. Okay. <laughs> right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Perth's Premier Podcast, Monkey Sword Fight, with me, your host Jordan Patrick, and my co-host, Podcast Daddy. Mr. Michael Thoughts. We should start doing like uh, nicknames because that podcast that I like, which I'm going to touch on later, the Deezus Samero podcast, Bodega Boys, they call themselves. Yeah, you talked to them before. Oh, yeah. yeah. And they just they list off all their nicknames in the beginning. So it's Podcast Daddy. What's the other one? What's podcast the other one? Podcast Daddy. I don't know. Oh, man. I had a couple. I, I was listening to them off in the car. But anyway, where were that? You just tell them that <laughs> Connie, just sitting in the car like, ah, <laughs> yeah. Podcast Daddy, they call me Podcast Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> you should too. Where were that? <laughs> Uh, to succeed in life, you need to take chances. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. Did you make that one up yourself? Of course not. None of, these, none of these have come you from my one, brain. You made one yourself. I, oh, one, yeah, because I was drunk. This, I've, got some, I've got some like, early <laughs> feedback. So like when I was away last week, okay. I, I put the Stevie Mac episode on in the car when me and Chuff were just driving, mm-hmm. and I actually got to hear the actual gasp. Because <laughs> she, she, like, she was there with words with Dawson. And said, no, I, heard, I looked across and said, Oh. <laughs> <laughs> also got your old da Andy Mark on the ones and twos. What's happening, Mike? Yo. That was a poor words with Dots. Oh, this week. okay. <laughs> I got a backup. Can I go with the backup? That, that, that one was just basically, you know, if Did at first you don't succeed, try again. How that's, dare that's, so how that's, dare you? That's, how dare you? Pick yourself up, dust yourself down, <laughs> you know, get on with that's it. That's every <laughs> basic bitch's <laughs> Instagram profile bio. Wow. Okay. Um, <laughs> some live feedback for you on the spot. <laughs> I accept I your challenge. Can, I'll stay my game. Been up. good recently. That was just. Uh, well, see, I, I enjoyed last week's one. I can't remember what it was, but I did enjoy it. Me neither. Once the pass me, the pass me. I thought the sigh was unwarranted. What's <laughs> <laughs> got a very special guest this week? We are joined by Samuel Matthias, Hello. barber, vegan, tattooist. <laughs> barber, <laughs> vegan, tattooist. I'm just, I'm just Pinterest. In that me. order, <laughs> yeah, I'm just Pinterest in person. <laughs> Human Pinterest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. Uh, no, Sam's been. Uh, Sam's been one of the people who wanted to go on for a while, so I finally actually messaged him because I'm shite, <coughs> and uh, he was more than happy to come on. So we'll get talking to you about. All your goings on. Mm. We do have some housekeeping to take care of. We do. This week's show is sponsored by Stevie Max Skate School. Yeah. Try something new for your kids. All ages and abilities are welcome. Stevie Max Skate School on Facebook. Nicest guy in Perth. He is. Straight up. More mm-hmm. than I in that. Yeah. And number one fan, there's a, so he might be coming to my show on Sunday. And my mum's coming as well. So I'm really hoping to get a picture of Stevie Mac and my mom, like the show's <laughs> two biggest fans, <laughs> like a meeting of the minds. <laughs> Did I, thought, to... I, I thought Mama, I was Mama Pat's favourite, but oh. I'm slightly worried now. She's about to meet Stevie Mac, and I'm about to get bumped down to number two. <laughs> Still know? in front of Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> right. Safely, safely in front of Jordan. Favourite child, for fuck's sake. <laughs> I think you guys should fight to the death with the, skateboards the, over uh, Mama Pat's yeah, love. The Steve, best Steve thing I've ever seen today, though, so Ra- Rachel, hi Rachel. Hi Rachel. Hi Rachel. Hi Rachel. I didn't even have to prompt them. No, oh, that's a good. pro. So I gave Rachel a lift to work today because Rachel's car's broke down. So usually when I drop off a car, I pop in and say hi to my mum. Mm-hmm. So I popped in, walked in the kitchen, Rachel popped her hand with my mum and she went, Hi Rachel! And then the biggest <laughs> smile went across her face. Ah. <laughs> she got to Stuff from our show is making it out know, there. Yeah. <laughs> We're going viral in real life. What is that? I just wore a mouth. Uh, I don't know. I don't want to be viral in real life. No. <laughs> Um, I've, I've <laughs> got some attention. <laughs> I don't want to go back. I've got some feedback on uh, last week's show. Okay. Uh, Stevie Max looking to steal my job. That guy was fucking smooth. He was smooth. Very good. He and is, like, so uh, you can't say a bad word about Stevie Max, but he fucking nailed it last week. Yeah, he was good. He even did some magic for us. Did we? Did we actually get that on the mics? I don't think we did. He talked Not on about the mic, it, but no. Yeah, I'm he, sure it was on. The, was it on the Patreon? Uh, oh, maybe on the Patreon. Because I remember yeah. hearing it and just thinking, "Fuck, I wish I could see what's going on." But you suckers wouldn't have heard it if you don't. If you haven't chipped in. Yeah. So, uh, speaking of the Patreon, who are our Patreon? Z. 
Our patrons, you mean? Our patrons. <laughs> Would you not call me your Patreons? No, they're patrons. But it's a Patreon. I, mean, oh, I never understood why it was called that either. There, there must be a reason. We'll find out. Maybe it's Oof. the verb. Is the app not working again, Mike? It's not even the app. I went to the website, but um, I'll try and go to the app now. <laughs> This, this happens, happens every, all the time. Every no, week and we still haven't we had out to, We had two good weeks, but no, it's not letting me get to it. Fucking hell. Talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> anyway, other feedback I had yeah. um, was the the female Bond. Now, I was against it until I thought about one specific actress. Who's this? Tess Mae Thompson. She was, uh, names. she was Valkyrie in Thor and the Avengers and <sighs> what else? Andy Mack when he can who she is. No, I've not a clue. <laughs> and she's also in the new Men in Black film that's coming out. And uh, she's uh, like, she's a openly outed bisexual. And I just thought, you know what? That'd be fucking pure Bond if she shagged men and women. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? That'd be like ultimate personizer. <laughs> Personizer. As opposed to womanizer, because oh she'd be just God. nailing everything. So, Personizer. If it was Tess Mae Thompson, I'm on board. Because she's deadly, too. Please put a picture of her on the Facebook page. I, I don't do know it. who she is. I'll, I'll make a uh, note of it. She was in Thor, wasn't she? Yeah, she was yeah, the, yeah. the drunken wifey. Yeah. Let me just make a note of that. I got the Patreon list up, found it. Hit it. Uh, we'll start from reverse this week. Let's live. Let's go edgy. Oh like, why don't we get crazy? Let's oh, get fucking yeah. wild. I've gone for one week and just <laughs> can't get chaos reigns, man. No, we can't get the app to work, but fuck it. We're just going to do it in reverse. <laughs> yeah. Let's go all out. We got Stash, Stephen Tosh, Roddy Bader, Ralphie Roggs. We've got a flying fucking fly here. flying around it's here, like too. It's like the episode of Breaking Bad. Um, Rachel. Hi, Rachel. Hi, Rachel. Hi, Rachel. Hi, Rachel. We're going for round two. Uh, <laughs> Nate Black, Ian Shepard, Fraser Reevy, David Forrett, Craig McCaffrey, Chopstick69. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Callum McLaughlin, Andy Henderson, and Ali Cook. Yeah. Thank you very much, everyone. We will be doing our additional content. So if you haven't subbed up for the low, low place of Fiverr, yeah. you get uh, like an hour, almost two hours per month of built in content. We, we, you can donate up to five dollars a month, but if you can only afford a couple of quid, that's all right but, as well. Oh, yes. Mike You're, just you, nailed that fly. Really? Aye. Yeah. He just dropped it. Oh, and, 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 <laughs> I'm smacking flies here. Anything you guys like can nipple. afford. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <like laughs> oh, I'm <nipple>. nipping. <laughs> actually, the, that, the yodel story is a nip job, actually. So we'll get job. to that. Yeah. Just for, again, anyone, if this is your first episode listening, Mike's uh, personality has developed over the two years <laughs> we've been doing this show from a, Thanks to from a, from a shy... <laughs> Retiring, non confrontational type to the angriest black man you ever did see. <laughs> Andy's uh, Andy's my life coach, so <laughs> he's uh, he, he's getting me right. He's getting me nipping nipping things in the bud. Yeah. So are making, you a nipper? Making Sam? enemies as well at the same time. Just, <laughs> just you are nipping a nipper. things. I would say so. <laughs> just nipping. Into, into the mic. <laughs> oh, sorry. I need a definition. Nip, just like uh, before you, a problem develops, you make sure that it doesn't develop. You nip it in the bud. Yes. Oh, I don't even think about consequences. No. <laughs> <laughs> no I just go for it. Yeah. Yeah, I first kind of guy. I like yeah, your style. Oh, it. shit. I shouldn't have done that. But oh, I shit. <laughs> um, but yeah, we will get into the Patreon. Yes. Yeah, a little bit later on. I feel like I had more feedback, but I think I was really just full of anxiety that I was going to come back and you were going to tell me that Stevie Mack was a new host. Cause... He is, but he, he's just not available tonight. Oh, okay, we're going to let you good. know next week before it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. Anyone else got any feedback? Anything they heard from peeps? Uh, no, no feedback. Some good encouragement. There was, is the poll finished on the Bond thing? It looked like it was a resounding no for a female Bond last time I checked it. Yeah, so we put a poll up on last week about uh, whether a female Bond would be oh, would be good or not. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Shit. Uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> We've all been there. Did that, ever, <laughs> that ever happened to you? What no. was that? What was that face? <laughs> <laughs> there was that phase where it was the video, but it was yeah. Like, why? I can't, I, I can't believe he said that, and then it was the woman getting absolutely rattled. Right? Why do people do that? Like it's guys just being shitty to other guys. That's... But it's got to the point. It was so overused that, like, if I hear it now, I know that exact noise. I know they're not watching porn. Yeah, I know they're what they've been yeah. absolutely done. It's by the reaction, reaction and everyone's just going, "Oh, fuck, fuck, not again." Okay, not part of done. Just look at the comments. <laughs> no, but that's the thing. You look at the comments, and sometimes it doesn't always say that. It's just people oh. tagging other people in. I've, it's got, like, I've got a mate, scumbags. I've got a mate of mine who's like. Like, his whole shtick is to send those those photos on WhatsApp. So you know when you get a photo on WhatsApp and it's only part of the photo. And he opened so it up, it's a huge it, black dick or something. Yeah. Like, yeah. He sends him all the time to the point where I'm just like, Sorry about that guy. He'll send me a photo where I'm just like, not fucking opening that anymore. He's like, how no? I goes, tell I bet you it's an arsehole or a massive cock on the other end of this photo. And he's like, 
I fit enough. <laughs> Predictable. <laughs> Back to the James Bond story. <laughs> uh, so it was a resounding 80% no. 71 votes, 80% of those votes were Rana. Um, reasons? Uh, no, only <laughs> Blair McGregor said he should be recast as a Doug. That was it. That's the only thing I'm fully that. <laughs> what kind what of dog? Double old good boy. Just biting ankles. What dog would it be, though? Ah, she'd have to be a smooth looking animal, but mm. not too dumb looking. I'm thinking like a, a lab. No, nah, labs nah. are too friendly looking. It has to have a bit of an edge. Mm. So it can't Doberman. be like a, Alsatian or Dober- something. Nah, like Doberman that. would be a bad guy, I think. You always see Doberman. What, 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 do- what, yeah. what were the dogs in Resident Evil? Were they Dobermans? They were Dobermans, yeah. yeah. But they were always bad guys. What about a Rottweiler? Is that too chunky? Does it need to be a little bit more unsuspecting? Yeah. That would be like Jason Statham kind of dog, wouldn't it? Yeah. I don't know, man. Daniel Craig was a bit of a fucking. Oh, he did machine, machine stunts eh? as well. But then you got to go back to, like, who's the guy before that? Roger Moore, you're going to get a poodle to be James Bond. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a poodle. Piers, Piers yeah. Brosnan. Piers what, Brosnan. What kind of a growling would? poodle. Piers Brosnan would be like a, one of those like regal looking Scotty dogs and just cutting a bit. Yeah. He's coming. He's he's done some good films since then. Uh, he he looks like he's up for a bit of banter. Who? Oh, Piers, Piers Brosnan. Brosnan. Like uh. anytime I see him now, he's like a proper silver fox these days. He's I haven't seen him in ages. He's aged well. well. He has. Like he was a, a pure line. dick in Mrs. Doubtfire though. <laughs> yeah. It was a drive-by fruiting. Was he in that? Ah, he was like the 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 stepdad kind of guy. Oh, no one likes stepdads. No. (laughs) Shit. <laughs> 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 do, do you want to talk about it, man? You're all right. You're all right. No. It's still, it's still bad. Uh, we also did not a poll, but because uh, we're trying to do one poll a week, trying to switch it up on social media a bit. Uh, but how do you like your whiskey? Do you drink whiskey, Sam, at all? No. On my birthday. On your birthday? Yeah. Why? I don't, I don't really, really like drinking. Oh, okay, cool. What kind of whiskey? Hibiki. Hibiki. Oh, uh, all right. Favorite Japanese whiskey. Oh, yeah, I haven't favorite. tried that. Can you get it around here? Yeah, um, then you do it. Oh, plug, I'm yeah. diving in head fucking first. See, I'm not a big whiskey it's guy. Is it? Mm. Oh, no, I'm not I think then. it was one of my friend's birthday, and I bought me and my, me and my girlfriend a drink. And it all, in total, it comes like £30 or something. Oof. Like for two drinks. And I was like, wow. Japanese whiskey is kind of rare, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. You can buy it in that, um, that wine shop. The venue gives me a yeah, fear, especially when I'm drunk. You've got like your bank card and you're just hitting contact us all night. Mm, the next day, that's, you the get that that's oh. trouble. The Maybe uh, Chopstick 69 could find something out in the Far East Ooh. and bring it back for us. Oh, some Chinese Japanese whiskey. Yeah, that'll be good. It's, it's, it's probably, probably be in Japan. I don't know in the next ten minutes. She bought that fucking <laughs> buys you last time. I don't think I've trust. <laughs> like one of our listeners, Claire, uh, she lives in Beijing. And for she came on the show last year and she brought rakes of weird Chinese snacks. Oh. I watch a guy on YouTube like that. I like it a lot. <laughs> yeah. Just random snacks. You get oh, sent ones. From somebody, some of them were all right. Some of them were straight up just weird. And then she gave us this shit that's pretty much just lighter fuel <laughs> called Baiju. And it is fucking burny. Like uh, 80% proof. <laughs> I was I was having a bad night and we were recording one day and I just was just sipping it from the bottle. And and it might uh, like half a little bottle and was just like, Egh. It was not nice. Suck it loose. <laughs> It's like sailor strength rum. Uh, Never yeah, again. Uh, the people. Most of the people said um, a little bit of water. A lot of comments on here. A lot of feedback on that particular post. Uh, of course, having to do with an alcohol. Yeah. <laughs> um, Connor Suitmaker said no ice cut with iron brew. That's a sin. Can't See, do that. Uh, really? you, you, you mix bourbon, but yeah, I don't think you mix whiskey. Nah, I can't do that. Uh, but I'm not a big whiskey drinker. I just I don't know if it's it's one. Of, is it not an acquired taste? You're supposed to only put like one. One piece of ice and then water droplets of water. I know that much. Yeah. Yeah, you can take, you can have like one glass of whiskey, have it neat, then put a drop of water in it. Tastes completely different. And then leave it five minutes. Completely different after that. Hmm. Maybe I'm not doing it right. Maybe I'll I do. try it tonight when I get in. Is that because Connie got used to your midweek drinking habits yet? Maybe. She has. Yeah. yeah. She can bob and weave now too. It's crazy. <laughs> She's. Uh, <laughs> uh, You'd be fucking brave enough. <laughs> I know. She she fucking wiped me right <laughs> out. Like, you see her like on her Instagram. She's all doing like the acrobatics and she. I think yeah. she would just swing from the light fixture and clean you the fuck out. She's sturdy. Yeah, she's like, she's like hundred... Catwoman. Oh, you can't call birds sturdy. They don't like that. No, she's sturdy in a good way though. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. She's just all that walking with the dogs. You no, know, she's got a nice firm base. That's what I like about her. <laughs> Solid core. Yeah, that's it. I used to see her like hitting Mike with like a hurricane runner. Name one of them. Ah, uh, yeah. I hope she does. <laughs> <laughs> How much have you had to drink tonight? I'm sorry. Look, you looked at the board. Like, this is not the board. <laughs> I know. This, is, this is on a list of things. This is here. all off the cuff. I'm not even started speaking to Sam yet. No, I know. I'm <laughs> just enjoying the... it. <laughs> Sam, you Matthias. Hello. 
We've known each other for about two years now, and I had to actually ask you how to pronounce your surname on the way in. Because no one knows. Matthias. 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 Where's that? What is that? I think it's Welsh. Oh. Huh? Well, that's what, can I ask you about it? Because I love, like, we sent, my, uh, we sent Sam the pre-interview, and my favourite thing was we, uh, we asked the question, where are you from? And you put... Made in Italy, raised in Newcastle. Mm, yeah, I'm a bit all over the place. That's a pizza I want to eat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Does Newcastle do? <laughs> it's got brown ale as a sauce. Yeah. <laughs> I had a thing about brown ale. Was apparently like they had to change the recipe up years ago because like miners were going mental drinking it. Oh, oh it makes like, you fight you, mum. <laughs> really? Yeah. Is it like the Buckfast yeah. of the North? Of oh, 100 percent. Yeah, is yeah. it really? Yeah, Americans love it. Brown ale. You see it all over the place in like TV shows in America. I think who was it last time? I think someone posted a thing about um, what's that thing about the no- the nerds? Huh? That TV show. Tuna Fat. No, the American one. Re- Revenge of the Nerds. No, that's a really good film. American yeah, Big Bang Theory. Big Bang Theory is the oh, one. Th- I don't. Okay. I've never seen it. Well, Neither my ex used to watch it, but uh, it's on the background. <laughs> but, uh, they they drink brown ale constantly, apparently. Oh, all right. And it, at work, I have like all my razor blades going in a brown ale bottle just to. Kind of remind myself why I don't drink it. <laughs> <laughs> what does it taste like? Heaven. It's what I remember. I, I haven't drank it in a long time. You only know, uh, remember the first mouthful, and then after that, it's just violence. Gone. I, I, <laughs> there was one night when it was my first night out in Newcastle, and I had nothing to eat because I thought it was definitely the best thing to do. <laughs> yep. And I remember I drinking one brown ale bowl, then another one, and then probably about third, fourth, and just every club we went to, and then somehow I ended up in a club, and then on the floor, and then at home. I don't remember anything after that. Really? Like anything between, yeah. Went out in Newcastle once and like we're on a stag do. You survived? Oh, just. <laughs> was a, like, we were standing at the bar and there was like bottles of champagne behind the bar. I was like, how much are they? She's like, 10 quid. I was like, cool, hey, one of them. It's not champagne, mate. I can't, no, 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 it definitely wasn't. That's but urine. I, I thought, I thought they'd, but they, they handed me this fucking proper thick glass bottle. He's like, do you want a glass? I was like, no. <laughs> And like, all right, well, you go there. And then they just let me cut about the dance floor of this giant thick bottle of champagne. That's I was like, not safe. This is dangerous. No. By the way, uh, you'll fight your mother, leader in the clubhouse for uh, episode title. Is, that our, is everyone <laughs> you'll cool fight with that? Your mother. Yeah, I, I like that. That's all right, cool. Nice. Anyone's bomb. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that might take it. That might tip it. I thought I knew it was bomb. Fight anyone. <laughs> <laughs> I wish we could, like we go back and just soundbite Andy Max one liners. I know you can make ultimate like that's ultimate phrasings there. Soundboard. I, yeah. I wish either. I'd, I'd download. It's I'd pay one and nine for an Andy Max soundboard. I wish uh, neither of us were so useless. We could probably edit like all these things together and uh, have all the Andy Max stuff in one place. <laughs> I just want everything Andy Max says printed. You didn't. It. You didn't want any of that. You didn't want any of that. Pickled. Speaking of my knock, so I just quit. My favorite one. That someone was talking about this the other day. He looks like I've already battered him. It's yeah. a personal favorite. Of mine. It, it is true though. <laughs> it was about Lawrence Leon Bone, was it not? No, it was uh, Andrew <coughs> Lloyd Webber. <laughs> Oh yeah, well, it? <laughs> he's absolutely, he looks like he's been on the brown ales. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I mean his mom's got the better of him. <laughs> Have you ever had a brown ale? Oh yeah, I like yeah. a brown ale. Like Nuki, Newcastle brown ale is always like. Oh Nuki yeah, I've had that always, before. Okay, yeah. always a classic. Yeah, like, it, just, just it reminds slip. me of the old Newcastle strip. That's like the first <clears throat> one of the first few strips I can R. remember R. with that big oval uh, sort of logo Newcastle on brown it. right in the middle. Mid nineties job. I remember that they don't even make it Newcastle anymore. No, do they not? No, that's terrible. Where do they make it now? I don't know. Someone's stupid like Leeds or somewhere like that. I'm not wow. saying Leeds is stupid. I like Leeds a lot. But, uh, <laughs> you know, it's not Newcastle, is it? I like a brown ale, though. Not the real North. <laughs> so, like, the North remembers. Yeah. The North remembers. <laughs> I, have, I always <laughs> say that pe- people from Newcastle are just English people who can't hate the English. <laughs> so I remember someone said that to me once. I think it wasn't actually a Geordie that said it to me. <laughs> Do you guys get offended when like the people from Northern England say call like themselves Northerners? Because they're not really Northerners, just right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we get that a lot. Right. Very good. You share the yeah. accent, it's like, oh god, not again. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, speaking of soundboards, I found. I know we're kind of going on a tangent here. But, I'm into um, it. The Bodega Boys podcast I mentioned before, they have a soundboard. Some, just a fan made it. Just put all like the, the most commonly things said on the podcast. And there's one I've been saying for about the last, well, it was 72 hours, but I had to stop yesterday because Connie threatened my life. It was, uh, <laughs> it was this one. It's a fraud, it's a fraud, it's a fraud! 
So imagine me just like <laughs> sk- dancing around my house, shirtless probably. It's a fraud, it's a fraud, it's a fraud. She's, she's just, ready to stick her dog on me, like, go get him, was, kill she's him. She's just immediately like, asking you to move in. <laughs> yeah. Why did I do it? Why you did I do it? You with your kids and your annoying fucking scenes. She had her mom up yesterday probably talking about it. It's going like, how do we get him out? <laughs> well, I found out yesterday that uh, Chuff doesn't like the word totally. Totally? Apparently I say it all the time. What's a totally? Is that a shit? It's a shit. I'm okay. away for a totally. Yeah. I quite See, like I, I'm still learning all this stuff. I get questions about it all the time at work. It's like, what does this mean? It's like, oh, no, I fucking do. Pop quiz. <laughs> yeah. How long have you been in Scotland? Oh, God. 2013? 2013, maybe? okay. Yeah, I think. Fucking hell. Yeah. And what brought you north? My ex. Really tangent. Your son's in the interview. Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, segway, smooth segue back nice. in. Yeah. yeah, we were together like six months and I moved in. Best thing to do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. I All have right. a son now, so it's great. That's good, yeah. It's a product, worked out well. Product of love, wasn't yeah. it? Yes, there you go. Well, we lived in Glasgow. That's my favorite. I like Glasgow. Where did you stay in Glasgow? Uh, Strathbungo. Okay. The posh. Scottish Scottish How do you find Scottish name? <laughs> Strathbungo. Strathbungo. <laughs> you got a heat butt someone after you say that name. Ah! Um, <laughs> fucking hell, that was almost no bad. <laughs> <laughs> How do you find like the Glaswegian people compared to Perth? I have to be very careful because my my <laughs> girlfriend's parents are well, family's all Glaswegian. I love them. Yeah, I me love, too. I love Glasgow. Yeah, it's a they're just totally different type of people. It was, it was it was Kevin Bridges once said there was a it was voted one of the most dangerous cities in the UK, and the same week voted the friendliest place in Scotland. So <laughs> yeah. you're either going to get stabbed or get a fish supper bought for you. Best one of the two. So so you moved up here. So we're going. You you given us a list of jobs. Mm. Um, so we're going to the one I, I know you best for. So you're a barber. Mm. Oh, yeah. List of jobs. <laughs> well, <you laughs> yeah. Gave, gave us two. So we'll do this one first. So um, how did you get into barbering? To be fair, it was just something I kind of I walked past the shop and I went, oh, they're looking for an apprentice. And then my son's mom, she was with me. She was like, yeah, you should do it. And I was like, yeah, why not? <laughs> and then yeah, I just <laughs> I just went in. I was like, look, I'm I've, I'm interested in cutting hair. Like I've never done it before. I've shaved my my head a few times and I was like is that enough experience like yeah why not <laughs> but no it was it was great um, what was the name of the place Rebel 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 oh, nice. yeah. they is were it, really nice really really good shop is it Glasgow yeah okay yeah. Union so Street. how long were you apprentice for Oof. two years in total no no probably about a year and a half in total because I moved I moved shops mm-hmm. but. so I think we touched on this with Brandon and Grant it was a while ago when they were on but um, did you were you surprised at like the level of work that went into a haircut? Because yeah. just from like speaking to you guys and speaking to Grant with the barber school and stuff, and like when I was there with the students getting my haircut, mm-hmm. they were talking about like sections and oh, how yeah. to work the fade and different techniques. So did that come as a bit of a shock to you? Yeah, completely. Different hair types, different color, can the hair different, lines, everything. Can the color affect it? I mean, the, someone with really dark hair can't. I don't know, it's weird. Someone with blonde hair can't get the same haircut as someone with really, really dark hair. Mm-hmm. It's like someone someone who's got blonde hair brings on a Zayn Malik for. It's like, mm-hmm. I'm not going to do that because you can't copy that haircut. I mean, mm-hmm. do something very similar, mm-hmm. but the hair color, it seems like skin fades, especially. Yeah. You're not really going to get the same outcome from someone with really, really, really thick dark hair is just one who's got really thin blonde hair. Does that yeah, make sense? I see what you mean, yeah. yeah. I mean, it looked like you're bald up to the top because they yeah. have to be quite fine. Yeah, so you just have to, like... I don't know, I, don't, I wing it most of the time. <laughs> 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 I would feel bad saying that, but... Uh, no, no I, I think we talked about this before, is that you appreciate, like... I know from, like, going into the shops with you guys before and, like, saying, I want this, mm. and then you just take a more look at my head and going, no, you didn't. <laughs> Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So, like, you have to be able to imagine a certain amount of creativity to say, right, I can't do that, but, like, you say, I can do something similar. You have to tell people that something's <clears throat> just being silly. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know. Someone in a roundabout way. Yeah, yeah without, 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 without being too Get harsh the fuck about out of my it. Chair. But it's like, someone, someone's coming in with, like, quite thin hair on top, and they want, like, I don't know, like, a, a slick back with a side part. And it's like, that's not going to look the same as David Beckham. Yeah. Or, like I said, Zayn Malik, or whatever. You just have to, like, tell them. But you can't just say, like, you're going bald, dude. Like, I, well, as somebody who's going depend. bald, yeah, 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 I would like to be told. Yeah, no, I, I told a story a couple of weeks ago about my barber. Well, this is probably back when I was like, I mean, your, that was your life coach before my life coach before Andy. Yeah, he was the original <laughs> he did a shit job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, 
I was like, yeah, I want to just grow it out because I want to get this. And he was like, nah, don't do that. And I was like, uh, uh, okay. But you take that because, you know, this person yeah. looked at heads all day. So why mm. wouldn't I take his advice, you know? It depends on how friendly you are with someone. Like, I wouldn't tell someone who just lit you in my chair one, for one time is going, dude, you're bald as fuck. Yeah. But if, say, for, like, one of my clients I've been doing for two years, and was like, this is the time. Now, now is the time. Yeah. Just shave it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's what happened to me. <laughs> is it? No, nah, I was you just feel better about it. I was just sick of fucking slicking it back every day. I see myself so much time. Oh, dude, I've I've loved having a shave that every six months. I'll be like, yeah, man, I'm gonna go my hair out, and I go to certain life and go fuck this. Why did I do it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fuck I'm this. exactly the same. Since I shaved, I went, this is great. Yeah. I don't need to worry about it. No. I never have to think about it. I can put on a hat and not worry about taking off the hat. Oh, is my hair all fucked up? Mm-hmm. Like, wait, do you know what I mean? That yeah. just flexibility. You just like you never think about no. it. No, thing is that it suits every occasion. It doesn't matter yeah. if you're dressing smart, if you're dressing casual, your hair just fucking fits. Oh, yeah. it's beautiful. I love so, it. So, like, well, I work with, like, my day job mm. uh, is, like, social media. So I follow, like, a lot of different social media, like, social media manager accounts on Twitter and Facebook. Do barbers have stuff like that? Like, do you, like, actively search out things to kind of make you be a better barber? Or do you kind of... Yeah. You do? Yeah. yeah so like, what are some of the things that you look at regularly to say, like, oh, all right, I can do this when I go to work next time, or I can do that? There's a lot of videos on YouTube... I'm not going to lie, it's just the best thing for uh, Uppercut the Looks post out specific haircuts mm-hmm. that suit different hair types or different products that they have. So it's like if it's slick back, you'll have like a slick product. Or like a, I, I used to really, really like, I think it was that Monster Hold. It was like really oily. It took three days to wash out your hair. Mm-hmm. But it's not the same as like someone with really short hair would have like a messy on top. But I don't know, it just depends on your ability to to see it and go, oh, I've not been doing this, but I can, I can change that one little bit to make my hair go better. Yeah. So is, it, is it almost like, so see, you said earlier, like, someone will ask for something, you'll say, I could do something similar. Mm. You'll be able to, like, ref it, refer back, ref, refer? Ref it? Ref, mm. Refer back <laughs> to something you've seen and be able to use a different style or a different technique. Yeah. To actually give them what they're looking Sometimes like. it works, sometimes it doesn't. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just by chance, really, depending on... Your, that looks awesome face when it looks shit. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, oh, yeah, you perfected good. it. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, I like that a lot. Yeah, I'm really into that. Dude. You know, it's just like they look at you and go, "Is that all good?" And it's like, "Yeah, man, yeah, smash it, no problem." <laughs> yeah, next time I'm gonna shave your hair off. But, uh, <laughs> do you again. do you feel that your unique appearance helps you gain customers? I'm really surprised it doesn't turn them away. To be honest, no, but it wouldn't now. Maybe 30 years ago, maybe it would have. Yeah. I think now. I think, me and you, I think if I was cut, shock. I think if I was cutting hair, they'd be like, this fucking guy didn't have any tattoo. I'm yeah. going to him. I think if for like, <laughs> see if like, on eShop doesn't have a shop front. So like when they come in, they go, oh fuck, look at this guy. Yeah. And I've seen, it's really funny because the way the window is, I'm like, my mirror is directly in front of the the door. So I can be looking in the mirror, cutting someone's hair and I see someone's head pop around the corner of the window going, nah, I'm right. just walking <laughs> out. Just to see where it is because yeah. there's, I don't know. It's weird. But I, I know, because ladies, we've known each other for a couple of years now from when you worked in Badlands and stuff. And mm. like, the first time you see you, you've got quite a striking appearance with the tattoos and shit. Yeah. And I think people can, like, wrongly so, you take an initial judgment of someone. But then after being in your presence for like five minutes, like, you're the most huggable man I've ever met in my life. Aww. I like playing off the whole pissed off guy, but I'm just too lazy to deal with shit. <laughs> you know? Like, it's nice. Ideally, I'd just I'd like being left alone, but... I don't know. I'm just too lazy to deal with people. That's why. We should, I, think, we should, I think that's why it is. We should describe a little bit because there may not be people, there may be people who listen to the show that may not be on Facebook that'll see a picture of us mm. if you're happy to take a picture with us later. Yeah. yeah. So you have a couple of tattoos. You have barbed wire under your right eye. Yeah. What's, on your, what's on your left eye? It's uh, like a little lightning symbol bolt. symbol in Nordic. Oh, okay. So that's quite cool. a few Viking tattoos. Tattoos on his neck, head, forehead, covered in tattoos. So, uh, but we'll take a picture. We'll put it up on the Facebook page. So, like, we'll, we'll talk about the tattoos. Um, when did you get your first tattoo? I was seventeen. I shouldn't have done this. It's very illegal. What but, was your first one? Oh, uh, if my mum's listening, it was in a <laughs> shop. But realistically, it was with my friends in my bedroom. Oh, <laughs> in your bedroom? Yeah, it was bad. It was oh, really too bad. many brown ales after. Uh... <laughs> no, uh, just stupid. Just thought, yeah, I want to be able to do this. And it was, it was actually one of my, the guys I used to hang out with in the tattoo shop, like, just fucking buy a tattoo shop, uh, tattoo cat of eBay. And thinking back, it was the fucking worst thing I've ever done. <laughs> Which it one was, was it? Which tattoo was it? I just did my legs. Oh, okay. Just stupidly my legs. I, I mean, I did my research and I did clean everything, you know? Like, mm. and so my mum was at work. Yeah, oh, yeah, it was super stupid. Like, <laughs> But it wasn't as stupid as it could have been. <laughs> no, it could have been a hell of a lot worse. Yeah. I could have got... Diseases. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there could have been diseases involved, you know. 
It's like the wor- the worst thing people do is just like you you still see it like no gloves, not wrapping everything, needles dirty. Like mm. well, we fidget talked about this when she was on the other week. She's like, it's, it's, it's scary. It's difficult now because you can make work look so good online mm. that people don't tend to think about. Oh, that's a cheaper tattoo. Fuck, I'll get that. But it's, like, it's yeah. not as renowned, but I think it's, I suppose she says her biggest bugbear was folk just doing a couple of drawings, sticking it up online and calling themselves a tattoo artist. Yeah. yeah. So. I got the shit kicked on me in my apprenticeship. Yeah. So, like, yeah, I got it bad in me when I was younger. Just proper the way to do it, <laughs> you know. So when did you start tattooing? I take it that was before uh, Barbara. Yeah. Uh, back in Newcastle, I worked with a couple of guys who opened a shop. And um, because they, I tattooed a, a ship in my leg, they're like, oh, yeah, that looks quite good. Do you want to be an apprentice? I was like, yeah, fuck it, why not? It'll be, be all right. The things are <laughs> like cool thing to do. I, honestly, I well, I've always wanted to do it. I've always been. My dad was covered in tattoos, which my mum mom hated them. Like, the idea of being a tattoo to my mum was, I actually said to her, I was like, mum, I'm going to be an apprentice. And she's like, that's the worst thing you could have done. I was like, would you rather me be a heroin dealer? She was like, mm. <laughs> She took a while. How much like, oh, money are yeah. you going to be making? <laughs> I know. And I was, now, now I'm saying I'm getting back into it. And she's like, oh, you need to tattoo me. And I was like, Fuck you! Like <laughs> I went through shit. My, 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 yeah, I had to hide my tattoos, man. Like I had to hide a lot of them from my grandparents, my family. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I went from wearing like shorts from the house to wearing joggers. Yeah, and then to wearing a vest or wearing a t-shirt because they didn't know I was tattooed. Really? Yeah, it was bad. Never bumped into you coming out of the shower and then. It was one time. Um, yeah, my, I didn't know what. To, like my mum came and I was like, oh shit. Like covering stuff, I was like, "Oh my god, I've got my chest tattoo!" So they pull my. I was like, literally, like <laughs> up to my neck with a towel. I was like, yeah, "You know, occupado." <laughs> <You know? laughs> and she never, she never said anything. I thought, I thought it was it. And then uh, it was on my 18th birthday. My mom, mom was like, "I know you tattooed." I was oh. like, where, where? And she was like, it's in your shoulder. I was like, no, it's not. <laughs> it's way bigger than you think it is, and it's on my chest. <laughs> oh. uh, but then she's been fine with it ever since. I mean, she, she, I know when she's pissed off when she doesn't talk about them. So every time I get like a new one, like my faced ones, she, she doesn't, doesn't speak about them. No, she doesn't mention them. Aww. But there's other ones, my sister will be like, yeah, that's really nice. Mom would say, yeah, that's really nice as well. And I'll hear off my sister, she'll be like, mom's not happy about that. <laughs> like I just got my forehead done to cover up my really bad hairline, but to me it's like the perfect fit and it's like my favorite tattoo I think. Yeah. But my mom still hasn't mentioned it. <laughs> so did you did you used to like do a lot of drawing before you got into tattoo and we always just like a doodler or? In in high school I think yeah I mean I can't really remember most of it, but uh, I don't know why my memory's so fucking bad. <laughs> So bad. I oh, okay. Know. I thought it was like a drunk story or something. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> just drank no, all through high school. high school. No, just didn't care. <laughs> I, I always knew that I wanted to be it. I don't know why. I just want, always wanted to be a tattoo. So I had in my head. I was like, Miami Ink, fucking New York Ink, all that shit. But it's nowhere near as glamorous as they put it on there. <laughs> it's a lot of like two o'clock in the morning, drawing up at six, going, open the shop up, clean. And it's just. It's one of the last. Apprenticeship arts, I think, as well. Do you know what I mean? You don't mm. get a lot. Of, people talk about you it. Have in, to like, earn it. People talk about it in football as well. Like you, you don't get a lot of people, like young players, cleaning boots and that, like they mm. used to. So I imagine it's the same in the tattoo world. But I think depends. It's a lot easier these days. Yeah, a lot. A lot of people just like back. I I was taught of two guys who took over the tattoo shop because those two guys got fucked up. They were they were they were so bad. But <laughs> they got they got sacked, and then two two new boys came in, and they gave me their proper apprenticeship. One one guy was in the body gang, the other guy was the ex-MMA fighter, you know, he was rock hard. <laughs> just solid guys, and they they definitely gave me the proper apprenticeship. Mm-hmm. Mm. Just So what, what did that include then? <laughs> when you talk about it. <laughs> <coughs> uh, cleaning all the time, going to the other end of Newcastle, get food, just bitch work. Mm. Essentially, but it's the way it should be. Yeah, yeah. exactly. You I have to earn you, it. You, you weed, out the, weed out the chaff. You yeah, know? Like, I mean, yeah. I've spent two years unpaid. You know, mm. like it's not easy. I got a lot of debt because of it, but and it caused problems in the house. Like because I wasn't getting paid, mum was like, "You need a fucking job." And I was like, "This is eventually gonna pay off." Mm. But oh, it's just. It was hard. It was very, very hard. There's a lot of stuff I can't really say, but mm. it was hard. Yeah. <laughs> You know, it's a form of art, but it's one where you have to serve an apprenticeship like that. You mm. don't necessarily go and do a, a you know, a BA degree yeah. in tattooing. In America, they started doing that, but it's just... It's, it's not going to be a shit. So your only option is, if you want to get in, is you need to fucking roll up your sleeves, go and work in a shop, and learn yeah. the hard way. Deal with the shit. There's a lot of people yeah. who can't deal with it. Like, I'm a totally different person than when I started my apprenticeship. I was going out every night, like three nights a week coming in like hungover and my boss was like 
if you come and hung over again, you're getting your full chest tattooed. Mm. I was like, all right, no bother. Came in like two two days later, just like hung over, and he was like, all right, cool. Take your top off, tattooing you. Sat there for six hours, get my whole chest lined. It was probably the worst experience of my life. I had my oh. ribs done when I was hungover, and it was probably the worst day of my life. It was the colour. The, the, and I didn't learn from that, obviously, because I'm a fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Two weeks later, came in again, really hungover, and he was like, right, doing a colour session today. Six hours of colour. Oh. It was it was disgusting. <laughs> and I, I don't drink. <laughs> Very rarely, anyways. But do you, so do you feel that like it, it helps you, especially in like like a high-pressure situation? Because we talked about with Fidget as well. Like... Mm-hmm. You're tattooing someone, so it's, it's that's forever going on then. You get the sweats. So, like, did that help you when you went into your apprenticeship for when you were a barber? Was there slightly less pressure? Or did you feel just the same amount, even though it was like, their hair will grow back? Yeah, that's a good question, yeah, because the hair will grow back. I think it's, yeah. I mean, if you fuck up a tattoo, you fuck up a tattoo. There's mm-hmm. no going back from it. Yeah. You know, when you can't, but it's laser. <laughs> it's going to cost a lot more. But, yeah, I think it's just taking the time and just appreciating for what what you're actually doing not rushing it I still draw most nights mm. but even with even with cutting hair I'll, I'll sit and watch some videos and be like oh that's what I could do mm. like just to change it a little bit and I'll get feedback from other guys and be like yeah you should do this bit to make this haircut a little bit better or just asking questions I used to ask questions a lot I didn't know what the fuck I was so is doing that, is that quite a big thing a big thing especially in barber bar, is barbering the right term yeah, uh, yeah. We'll go with okay, it. Barbering. Um, do you get like a lot of people that you'll post like, because I know it's quite... Um... <laughs> so another fly up in this. Oh, I might nip it again. ninja. <laughs> <laughs> um, I forgot my question. Yeah, so like, you, you, I think I know it's a lot of barbers. It's the same with tattoos, because we talked about this with Fidget again. Um, Instagram, social media is such a great way to get your portfolio out there. Yeah. So when you post up a haircut, do you get a lot of like DMs from maybe like more slightly like more experienced barbers or even maybe novice barbers who are asking you about? Not me personally. I don't really give a fuck. But no, it's, there's there is a lot of people out there who who do take social media as a, as a way to like I don't know show what they can do mm. and then be like I don't know it's it's a weird thing. Is it kind of like that? That's maybe the best. That's maybe not the uh, their consistent work. It's just mm. maybe the best thing. We're kind of like what people do on social media anyway. Yeah, yeah. yeah. these not, are my good days, see, not my yeah. regular days. They'll yeah. see like maybe one one haircut <clears throat> out of ten. Like, I'm I'm not gonna post like the sixteen haircuts a day. I'm yeah. gonna post like my favorite one from maybe that week or that day. Mm. Yeah. Or be like, well, when you look at one, just think I fucking nailed that. Yeah. Yeah. Just a bit make my dick bigger. You know, I need that. We shave around the base. I think helps. <laughs> But um, so you've just got. So you, did you not stop tattooing for a while? Yeah, 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 yeah. When I moved to Scotland, um, I broke my leg when I lived in Middlesbrough. How did you do that? Yeah, can we talk about that? that? Was one of your stories as well? Yeah. So um, can we talk about that first of all. Yeah, it was a. Uh, it was like a two week long process of me actually breaking my leg. It was funny. Um, <laughs> funny, so okay. In, Mid- in Middlesbrough, <laughs> I I don't know how the fuck I must survived it, but um, just living there in general is just crazy. Have you ever been? No, why? It's, no, it's a rough area. It's the lowest life expectancy in the country. Really? It's wow. really fucked up. So you got like the main road, Linthorpe Road, and then you go off like just one street and you're like a hundred boarded up houses. But then you've got people driving Maseratis and shit on that main street where all these shops charge like three and a quid for a jacket. It's fucked up. It's such a weird place. <laughs> okay. But uh, yeah, yeah. So um, used, every every week or something we used to have a, used to go to like local hogo show and uh, I actually kick someone in the head. <laughs> um, and I For any reason? My, or, uh... It's just motion. It was just Okay. All yeah, right. yeah, just motion to like local bands and bands are touring. But This is what I was afraid of going to the concert. Guys like him fucking kick me in the head. There's a difference between <laughs> a, a hardcore mosh pit and an alien ant fan mosh pit are two different oh, okay. animals. Right. So you're I'm okay. sorry. Continue. <laughs> it's the fun stuff. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so um, I remember thinking like my foot went around his arm like that, that would have hurt or like head just in general just went straight round. And I was like, this really fucking hurts. I can't put any pressure on it. So I think the day after, I was steaming drunk as well because I was like, you know what? I'm just going to, I can't stand up. I'm just going to get drunk. And that happened. <laughs> it's like I met some friends from Glasgow that day as well who, uh, Bank of Frontline, RIP. Um, and they actually carried me out, smoked a drink with them, blah, blah, blah. I got really steaming drunk. And then I went back home, went to hospital the next day. And I was like, I really, really fucking hurt. Four hours in A&E, bruised the bullet. I was like, fuck this. So I went, went back. Two weeks later, uh, I was playing the show in Durham. 
and I jumped up, went down, back down on my foot, and I felt like someone had kicked me in the side of the leg. So I, in my head, I was like, someone's just fucking kicked me in my leg. And I, I've been looking after this leg for weeks. Like, so I just punched the nearest person that was next to me. And I just fucking hit my leg. And the guy was like, Dude, I, no one was near me. Like, there was people like going, you just fucking fell over. I was like, what? I, I, I felt, I heard the big thud. That's all I could remember. I was like, you know what, fuck, I'll just probably bruise the bone again. Played my set, uh, carried all my stuff downstairs, went home, went to work the next day, I walked to the bus stop. I was like, this really fucking hurts, like, really, really badly. It was like, took me about half an hour walk for something that would take me five minutes. Yeah. Got on the bus, went to work, and then my boss was just like, he, he had a bike accident uh, about two years beforehand, and he crushed his leg. So he was really paranoid about legs, like, really mm. paranoid. And you could see, like, it was double the size. Oh. I said, like, you need to go to hospital. I was like, I'll be fine. I was probably just bruised it again. Um, and then I was, he was like, no, dude, you need to go. I was like, right, I'll, I've got a full day tattooing. I'll go off to work. Uh, went to the taxi, dro- dro- sorry. Went to the taxi, jumped in the taxi, jumped out, walked into the, I'm saying walk because it's really funny how it happened. <laughs> went up to the x-ray bit. As soon as she took that x-ray, she ran out, got me a wheelchair, and we need this. I was like, why? I'm, I'm fine, I can walk. And she was basing for like 50 minutes, and the woman wheeled me in. I was like, this is your leg. Like, what the fuck have you done? <laughs> so basically, is it the fibula? The smaller one? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, was split in half. <laughs> um, and I had no idea. I, I could hear it clicking during the day, and it was really fucking oh. painful. But that's what I mean. I just didn't, because I th- bruised it, and I thought I broke it two weeks ago. I was just like, you know, it's probably just in my head. Um, no, that just completely snapped in half. It gives me the heebie-jeebies. Yeah, yeah. me too. Snap bone, like, fuck. Ooh. Yeah, I was out, out for a couple of months. And then I went, I actually, this was the week me and my son's mum met. Um, she came down to visit me, bless her. And then we've, we've gone to Glasgow for a bit, just went out for about a weekend, came back down. My boss was like, oh, yeah, we're closing the shop, by the way. <sighs> I was like, really? I was like, yeah, we're, we're closing on Saturday. This is a Thursday. And I had to play a show down in Leicester on the Saturday. So I had two days' notice to, to get all my stuff and go. Jeez, oh. I didn't have a job at that time. I was living with a group of guys in Middlesbrough. And I was like, what the fuck am I going to do? Like, I can't move back home because I just had a cat. Mm. My stepdad's really legit cats. And I was like, no way am I getting rid of that cat. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, eventually just moved up to Glasgow. That's, that's how I moved up. So, started barber. so how long did you stop tattooing for? How long was it? How long were you in the barber game before you... I was... I think well, it was like six months after I moved to Scotland. I worked in a little shop in, in Motherwell. Not Motherwell. Um, what's the one next one? Hamilton. Worked in a little shop in Hamilton. Um, and then... The woman who won that, I don't really want to say names because it was quite messy what happened, but yeah, basically didn't want a traditional tattoo stain. And the woman had no idea what the fuck she was doing. But yeah, so I just stopped. I was like, you know what? I'll go back to it one day. Just get just any job. Mm-hmm. Ended up working in uh, Forever More, which is like the raps, my family. Like those guys will do anything for me. I'll do anything for them. They're like absolute family. Just Forever was that tattoo shop? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, tattoo shop in Glasgow. Best guys ever. Um, still, <clears throat> I know I don't go anywhere. Don't go into Glasgow as much as I want to, but I still talk to them, some of them online. Um, worked in there for a bit, and then that's when someone was like, that's when I walked past the, the barber shop and I was like, oh yeah, they're doing that. Mm. And then just fell into it, really. All right, so you've just started to go back into tattooing. Mm. Is that right? So talk us through that. When did that come about? I think it was about sometime last year. Um, I just still been drawn. I've got like a little desk set up in my, in my house and my old house as well. And then stopped when me and my, my, my housemate moved in just because just get high and all things. <laughs> but when he moved out, I had nothing else to do because I don't fucking go out. I'm mm. the most boring man alive. Um, so I was like, oh, I'll just start drawing again, start painting again, maybe spend like four hours at night painting. I was like, oh, man, I miss this. Mm-hmm. I really, I miss the whole drawing and painting and creating something that I can look at. Oh, that was fucking amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Whereas like, I mean, Barbara's amazing, don't get me wrong. It's, it, Amazing, like, just the look in people's faces when they're like, oh, that was a really good haircut, thanks, bro. Mm-hmm. But it grows out in two weeks. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It was a tattoo last forever. Mm-hmm. Well, it can do. It's quite cliche, but, you know. So, so where is it you've, you've started back? How did it come about? Uh, full circle. Um, I just went in to see Nige one day. I was like, Nige, dude, like, I really want to get back into tattooing. He was like, cool, no worries. It was easy as that. I was like, oh, wow. 
That's How three jobs now that you've said it's just kind of like, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> well, I'm just, I'm just fucking fall He's a really it. easygoing guy as well, though, isn't he? Yeah, you no, know he's I mean? amazing. He's so. such a nice guy. And what's the name of that shop that he... Full Circle. Full Circle, Gary, it's called. Gary okay. Wiedenhoff's shop. He okay. used to do... It used to be Incredibles. Yeah. Yeah, that was a while ago. Did you know the old Badlands shop? Yes, yeah, that's, that's where he had, yeah, yeah. So... How's how how have you found it? Did you feel like were you nervous going back to? Have you done it anymore? No, down? tomorrow's actually my first day. Oh really? Yeah, I'm shit myself. How many have you got? <laughs> Just one or two? Two, two so far. I had a cancellation, but we'll see. I'll check my funds. I'll take one off you. But <laughs> so yeah, have you, have you sort of have you got your your stuff all prepped, or are you just you think um, once it actually starts, you'll be just right back in the swing of it? Or? Yeah, I've I've talked to a few people, like a lot of, a lot of my friends are tattooists, and I've been talking to them non-stop, being like, dude, I'm fucking shit myself, like. Well, if I can't do it, I actually had a fucking panic attack the other night. Thinking about it, it's really, really <laughs> oh, funny. No. Yeah, man, it's bad. Well, that's but, I had that last night because it was my first day back at work. But again, sitting at a desk typing in is different from putting something on someone's skin. So I feel a lot better now. I was just like, if I take like six days off from barber and I forget what the fuck I'm doing. <laughs> Never been like fucking four or five years since I tattooed anyone. You know, mm. the last person I tattooed was my ex. So are the big pieces you got planned tomorrow or small, really, really small, no bigger than. My pan. Mm. It's not All right. Big. So when people come in and maybe I mean you have some experience doing mm. it, but if somebody new, are you obligated to go to them and say like, look, this person's only been doing this for X amount of years or, or months? And uh, I'm straight up. I'm yeah. just like, look, I've not I've not done this for a long time, so like, just I'll take my time. I'll do what I want to do, not what you want to do, because I don't want to put myself in the position where I go, oh shit, I'm not comfortable with that. Yeah. If I know what I'm doing, I'm more likely to to be able to handle it. Mm-hmm. Instead of going straight and doing fucking back pieces, it's yeah. silly. I'd imagine it's, it's much the same as like a lot of people I know that have like gone to tattooing or barbering. It's, it starts off your pals coming. Mm. Yeah, because it's someone like someone they, they, they trust to, you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> stupid enough someone to trust yeah. you, like Brandon Mundo. But then it, <laughs> <laughs> he's it, my first client tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Shout cool. to Brandon. Yeah, my, um, so yeah, like it's, it's, it's worth a mouth, isn't it? So yeah. like, you get a couple in your pals, and that's cool as fuck. Where'd you get that? Yeah, and then I've had a good good feedback so far. It's quite scary because I didn't really say much about it. I've had a plan for about six, seven months with Nice just to be like, look, I want to come in, just maybe even after work. But it wasn't practical. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, I'm working 10 till 7 in my new shop, and Nice probably works the same. So there's no point in me going in from like 7 o'clock to like 10 o'clock at night. It's mm-hmm. just, it just doesn't make sense. I want to keep him back. Yeah. So I just brought, rather than that, just go down three days a week, or in two days a week tattooing. Yeah. And just build up the clientele from there. Yeah, it's, I mean, I'm treating it like an apprenticeship, essentially, again. Mm. I don't want to just turn around and say, oh, I'm a tattooist, because I'm not. Mm. I've not tattooed anyone in five, six years. Mm. Four, five, six, I don't know, however long it is. <laughs> that's what I mean. I just, it's been that long, I, I just don't know. But I am quite confident. Like, I still know how to how to set up a machine, how to run a machine, how to tune a machine. It's, it's a lot of things that I remember, but it's just the confidence to be able to put that in the skin. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Was it, why would you describe your style? If you have one, um, I don't really like saying I got style because you see too many people going for the one style. Mm. But who's to say in ten years' time that's not going to be the style? Mm. It's like at the moment it's like watercolor tattoos. Like people can only do watercolor tattoos, or people can only do traditional, or black and grey, or Japanese. But if you like, I look at people like Gary who can do everything, mm. and that's the kind of tattoos I want to be. Mm. I don't want to just pigeonhole myself into one style because who knows in ten years, not even that, five years' time. That's not gonna be cool anymore. It's gonna evolve. Yeah. Else. And then it's like it's like with haircuts. People who only do skin fades are gonna struggle when they no one finds that cool anymore. Because mm. not gonna lie, they're starting to go out even now. You get perms now. Perms are coming back in a big way. Yeah. yeah I, know, I agree. <laughs> yeah. I absolutely agree. One of the kids. Perms my, are coming back. One yeah. of the kids. Mullets, on my football team. I want mullets to come back. Yeah. <laughs> mullets are on their way back too. Yeah. My old man had the powerful mullet. I'm pretty sure we put a photo. Oh, up Australia. Before. Australia has the best. Mullets in the world. They've never let the mullet go. No. Yeah. What was that? Was that was in that Minnesota hockey team that we put Minnesota up? Minnesota hockey here. Hockey yeah. flow. Hockey oh, flow. Yeah. That was amazing. Um, <laughs> cool. I, I don't know what else. See, I mean, like, say, um, buzzing for you. Hopefully, I'll be able to get in the chair and Both get a tattoo off you. That'd be cool. Because they look fucking dos. Like, I've, I've seen your stuff. So we'll share some of your stuff on the, on the page if you want us to. Thanks, just, bro. Yeah. Just happy to, man. Because like I say the, the shit that you've been putting up. Because I've seen you drawn for ages. Mm. Like, see, I've followed you for, since you worked in Badlands. And like I've always seen you every now and again, you would chuck up a like not a doodle. I don't mean a disparage. No, like, yeah. you know I mean? it, like, it was a fucking doodle. Yeah, be but, is, but a doodle to you is a completely <coughs> different to a doodle to me. A doodle to me is drawing a dick on a page on a, on a conference call. Do you know what I mean? Whereas a doodle to you is a fucking really nice drawing. Yeah, it was just something to do when I was bored, man. Not gonna lie. Fuck but man. no, I, I just enjoy it. I, 
I, like that. I mean, I remember when my son was in labor and I actually started drawing because there was nothing else to do. Mm. Apart from like, I couldn't, I didn't want to go to sleep or I didn't want to, every time, every half an hour, or not even half an hour, it was like every six minutes I'd tell my girlfriend to, to press the buzzer to get painkillers. So I was like, I'll just fucking draw. Mm. And I, man- I managed to make this giant sheet up um, of drawings for my boy that I just drew all that night. Did you keep it? Yeah, it's on my wall in my flat. Fuck oh, cool. Man. Yeah. So he's going to get tattoos. Oh, how, well, how old is he? He's, he'll be three next month. How, does, he, does he talk about your tattoos? Yeah. Every time I get a new one, he tries to scratch it off. <laughs> <laughs> it's not nice. When I got licks, my, licks his thumb and tries yeah, to rub it off. When I got my eyelids done, he just stood up and stared at me and I was like, what's that? <laughs> and I was like, oh shit, you've seen that. And I, I could see him like getting his thumb ready to like scratch it off. And yeah, I was like, don't, don't, don't do it. Don't, <laughs> don't do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's done it so much. So much. <laughs> oh, same. It's, it's cute as fuck. Like, say, the, the, the shit you put up your boy, you and him seem to be like close as fuck. And it looks cool, yeah. man. Like, it's, it's nice. It's been t- it's been hard. I, I'm only seeing him twice a week. Mm-hmm. But it's it's getting better. Mm-hmm. In Mexico, I've seen, seen eye to eye a lot more now, which is good because we never used to. Mm. That's tough, and I think like, me and me can probably relate to that. Yes, <laughs> you know what I mean. But it is nice when things, especially for the kids' sake. So, yeah, that's a, that's exactly what it is. Good yeah. stuff, man. Well, buzzing. Thanks. Man. I'm looking forward to seeing your tattoo work. Thanks, Shout out to Brandon for hitting the balls. And, and, yeah. and Andy, Andy's cool. And Andy as well. As well. Yeah, shout yeah. out to them two boys, them boys. Them boys. You them boys. I'm number ones. <laughs> do you want to shout out your Instagram and stuff now? We'll do it at the end of the show, but we'll shout out your Instagram. Get some potential clients on, lined up, hopefully. El Gordo Vaquero. Yeah. Where did that come from, by the way? <laughs> um, I've always liked Spanish because like the people in front of all the, all the guys there are all Spanish so it's like I've always loved that that culture they're all like Spanish gypsies so mm. the best guys um, uh, yeah uh, the fat it means the fat cowboy <laughs> nice <laughs> which is uh, it, it's kind of like a nickname now but uh, it was really funny how that came about some guy tried to use it as an insult and I loved it so much I kept it <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, yeah, that's a really good name. Like, shit, I can't use that one anymore. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We should, that's what we should do. We should try and find out. We should all come up with uh, nicknames in Spanish for the Patreon. Oh, it's the best. Oh, yeah. I, there's a, a comedian I like, a guy called Brian Callan, does a Fight on the Kid podcast. And one of his bits is he, is he wants people to give him a Spanish nickname. Like the mm. butterfly is El Gato. <laughs> it just sounds so much better in Spanish. It does. El Gordo Vaquero, also. Uh, second up in the. Your old dad da, da in Spanish. What is that? El Padre. Oh, no. <laughs> That's me. I have to think, what's old in Spanish? Right, right, right this is Patreon shit. Anyway, <laughs> well, thanks for chatting shit with us. If you're happy to, we'll probably get into some more of our regular features and talk some shit. Absolutely. If I'll do my best that. Nice. Good stuff. What do you want to do, Michael? I don't know. Let's look at the board. Let's look at the board. We should take a picture of the board. What's that that's written on the board that says train safety ads? Is that meant to say safety? But oh, it's missing yeah. an E. Oh, no. I, <laughs> I, spelled it. I knew I was going to spell something wrong. I knew it was going to be something stupid. Safety. <laughs> <laughs> no, train, sa- train safety ads. I spotted ads. about 20 minutes ago. It's been down my head. <laughs> <laughs> Is that why you're so quiet? <laughs> Somebody's going to put an E in that. It's been driving me mental, man. <laughs> I'll rub it out because I was going to put this on Facebook. I don't want people thinking I'm an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> it's been called out already. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, Michael. Yeah, yeah so, so uh, what, what, what's the train, train safety? safety ads? It's just, uh, I heard, something stupid. I heard, uh, I was listening to a podcast today, and all of them are starting with, like, these train safety ads about, like, there's, like, 270 people got killed going over train crossings in the, in the last year. And it's kind of like... so grim. Yeah, but it's like, 270 people in the grand scheme of things isn't a large amount of people. It is for that type of, you know, getting killed at a train crossing, yeah. Don't you think we could invest that money into something else to, to kind of prevent people from dying in a certain way? Yeah. I'm like, sure more people drown in America than... Seeing, like, some countries, they don't fuck about it. I think it's like in Germany, they basically shut the track for half an hour, get the jet washers out, scoop yeah. the bits of human off it, and That's the trains are running again. Yeah, I can see you look Japan. at Japan. Japan's like that. Well, did Japan was, has, like, was glass it? sheets where you can't go over it until the door's open from the train. Was there not a thing in Japan where they'd sent out an apology because a train left 20 seconds early? Oh, so they sent, people they, they are. Yeah, they, they sent out an apology because it was unacceptable. Have you seen the videos of, of the Japanese people? Oh, they're fucking the terrifying. Pack in there, yeah. that, like, I, I get you, claustrophobic. I'm not, I'm not claustrophobic. That gives me the fear. <laughs> it does, man. Like I, I, like Because Matt and that were talking about it uh, when they were on about China and no one queues for anything. That fucked me up. They don't. It's literally just you fight for position. Like if you're waiting to get train tickets, you just have to get to the fucking See, front. This is yeah, why I enjoy that. You would love, <laughs> I love that. Andy yeah, Matt would thrive. I'd be like... So, it, 
It's, uh, the big I'm, nipper had the alright as well. I I'd be all right now, as long as Andy was there. I'd be fine. <laughs> I'm too nice. I'd like to think I'm too nice for it. The, despite my parents, I think people just walk away from me, so it's like it works out well. I'm like, oh, <laughs> no, you go first. You go first. And the next thing I know, it's like two thousand people. I'm like, I'm not on the train yet. So you saying that people like they're, they're spending all this money on try to get people to act safely around? Yeah, we're on to, train crossing. It's, it's probably like the, tra- the you know the train crossing safety guides I, for America and it's kind of like I well, don't know why how, are you spending so much money know, on these ads I don't know how clear they can make it the barriers come down mm. the Stay lights away. and the bells start ringing I and then have you ever been stood next to a train crossing when like a, like a full pelt one goes past yeah that's fucking, fucking ground mental. shakes yeah. I, I think the, the difference is you find maybe more people in the states are quicker to jump it because of the length of some of the trains particularly some of those freight trains so if you don't get your 4 by 4 through there <laughs> you could be sitting there <laughs> for Five minutes as some of these trains are like a mile and a half long. Yeah, yeah. see, to be no honest with you, yeah. I'll wait. Yeah, I'll wait rather than fucking risk it. To be quite honest with you, I'm always late regardless. So there's no point in me. <laughs> <laughs> well, there, was, there was one thing I seen is that what we should just do is take the warning signs off of things and let nature take care of itself. I agree. It's na- yeah, it's natural selection, isn't it? You know what I mean? Like, that's why there's so many stupid people about now because we've got warning signs and everything. <laughs> Do not lick this battery. All right. <laughs> but I want to. <laughs> I've got it now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I feel like we talked about licking batteries like a couple of times in this show. Probably. Um, played some mini golf yesterday. Have you ever been up to a mini golf there? Up at Noah's Ark? Yeah, Noah's Ark. Yeah, mate. You on another school trip? trip? No, well, no. I was with my kids. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Scout it out before he goes next week. No. <laughs> Getting a lead of land, right? That one rolls to the left. <laughs> I know you're game, mate. Licking my finger, putting up in the air. He's like... just prepping for this monkey sword fight golf. The he's going to school us. He's going to show up and just be putting 20 footers. The wind's blowing left to right. Um... It was good. It was a lot of fun. I went in there and, you know, we got all the stuff. It was a lot cheaper than I thought it was going to be. The one at Noah's Art is good because it's not like a putting, like putting play like you get at like M&Ds or somewhere like that. It's basically just some slightly more imaginative puttings. Yes. So it's not like a super fun one. It's meant to be, I think, it's probably a way for them to just get a wee bit of extra income. What's the theme? Oh, pro- there is no theme. theme. The theme is dang. <laughs> the theme is golf. <laughs> <laughs> the theme is that there are nine doors. Nine holes technically indoors, and the other nine is outdoors. Indoors, yeah. yeah. yeah under a canopy. <laughs> a nice mix. It was freezing over there, but once you got into the sun, it was nice it's and warm. It's quality up there. Like I used to, like every now and again, I like going up to the driving range. Like, can kind of, you in a shitty day and it's a nice day? You yeah, get half an hour just up I've there. Never done it. Oh, it's good I've grammar. always wanted to. Even if you're it's shit, fun. it's like it's a good way to de-stress. It's just rattling some balls. Oh well. <laughs> hey, hey. It's a great, Number three. honestly, it's a great way to switch off. Just take your mind off of whatever you've got, whatever pressure you've got, and just go up there and just fucking clear your mind for. Come you know, on, this as well because if you're actually because I, I well, when I was playing a bit of golf in the summer, I went up, and after ten minutes, I wasn't thinking about what pissed me off. I was thinking about right, how can I improve this? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So you actually end up thinking about the swing rather than anything else. And then by the time you come out, you're like, fuck, I feel good. Yeah, we ended up going to the back and uh, going to the driving range as well. Oh, so it, did you save that boomerang of your daughter <laughs> m- missing the ball and knocking the tee from yeah. under and the ball just dropping exactly <laughs> where it came oh, It so was like a Charlie you, Brown's cartoon. Cr- cr- I was that, like, that's actually harder to do than hit the ball. You got that on the boomerang and I, I messaged, I was just like, that's fucking fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but... Um, yeah, we, first of all, we play a mini golf. Get the cl- get the balls, get the clubs, and we go walk around the corner. Hole one, there's a fucking dead bird right there, like right in there, like wow. disemboweled, like guts hanging out, head missing, everything. What's the theme? So I was like, all right, I, I was like, all right, hole two. Let's go to hole two. My daughter's traumatized now, so I go back inside because they <laughs> keep. But then secretly you're thinking, I'm a fucking smoke these fools. <laughs> I know, game. right? Well, I was like, oh, I got them now, <laughs> little bitches. So I was like. <laughs> So I, I was like, you know what? They keep looking at it. I was like, I don't want them fucking tossing and turning tonight. So I was like, I went inside, told the kid. <laughs> it must have been like 16 or 17 behind the counter. <laughs> I was like, look, there's a bird out there. I was like, my daughter's a little creeped out. Nipped it, Andy, by the way. Nipped I nipped the it. fuck out of that. Nip it would have just been picking it up yourself. <laughs> <laughs> and eating it. And like, excuse me, sir. Don't like, be like, like I'm not going to bother you, but there's I'm a really, bug. really sorry. <laughs> be like Ozzy Osbourne, eat the rest of it and really That's scare me. my daughter. Like, ah! That would have been brilliant, man. Y'all think you can make it so he came out with a shovel, Trained. right? Came out with a shovel, and he, he took it somewhere. I think he just took it behind the place and just chucked it. But he put it in your car or something like that. So, fucking dick. so we go, and we get, to, we get to the fourth hole, and we hear like a thud. Another bird falls off the roof onto the hole 
What? One again. Is one of your... I was like, what the fuck's going on here? Is one of your it's daughters right. like the Antichrist? That's like some <laughs> yeah, yeah. horror films. There's just birds flying into <laughs> shit. Maybe she is, actually, yeah. And then we see like this little, it looked like a little blue jay. It, was, it had like blue on its wings, white, and it had like, like a black like black shoulder swallow. area. Maybe a swallow. And it was like pecking at it. And then it was pecking at what? something in the gutter. Cannibalism. And it was like dragging them around. I was like, is this bird like killing Bird, these birds and throwing them down? That's that's how zombie films start. Can like yeah. one infected animal infects another infected animal, and then the, the, the bird will nip you, and then you're patient zero. And then, <gasps> oh, it's like, well, it's like that. Uh, Break that down. Was that, that kids film? <laughs> <laughs> what was that? There was that kids movie. No, it's not. No, it's not. No, it's not a kids movie. It's a um, cooties. You ever seen that? No, no. I've it's one of the funniest <laughs> zombie films ever. It's just like it's it's kids zombies. <laughs> Can you just take a minute? I've have seen this. Yeah, isn't Elijah it's Wood so not in that? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I've seen it. It's fucking, such a good it's fucking, movie. We, me and uh, me and Chuff watched it just like randomly. It came up on like Amazon Prime or something, and it's fucking brilliant. Yeah, Cooties is called Cooties. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, that would be. Yeah, it's so kids. funny. <laughs> it's so funny. There's like the guy who's like. Oh, so wait a minute. Mama passed his phone. Should I answer? Yes. On speaker. Hopefully, nothing bad to happen. Hi, mom. Hi, sweetheart. How you doing? I'm fine. You're on the show. We're recording. What show? <laughs> what do you mean, what show? <laughs> Andy's angry. Why? Well, I was telling him that Stevie Mac might be coming to the show on Sunday and he's worried that he might become your new favourite instead of Andy. Oh, well, I'll have to see what we... <laughs> oh! <laughs> Don't do this to me, Mama Pats. Don't do this to me. <laughs> I'll let you go, I'll get your phone back afterwards. Okay, then I was. Aye, okay, we're away to watch um, Game of Thrones. Oh, right. Oh, a good no spoilers. Give, give me a phone afterwards, then, all right? Right, will do. Okay. Right, love, Bye, you, love you, Mum. Bye. Bye. Love you. Love you. Bye, Rachel. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, Mum. Bye, sweetheart. Bye. Bye. That was nice. That was nice. My mum would ring me all the time. I wish my mum loved me. Yeah, me too. <laughs> so, anyway, we go back to all these dead birds. Yeah, so the, another one oh. falls on hole one. And I'm like, this is fucking creepy. And now my daughter's starting to freak out now. So I went in there and told the kid, I was like, another bird just died out there. And he was like, another bird. And I was like, yeah. So he went and got the shovel, me. throws it in the bin. <laughs> then the blue jay jumps up on the bin and is going in there. He's jumping in and out of it, like pecking at it, jumps up on the lid. A crow comes across and chases him away now. Oh, shit. It's like fucking, we ever seen the movie Birds? It's the apocalypse. It was crazy. That is, that's how horror movies start. That's, that's what happens. It's like Don't crazy animals. That. I get obsessed with it. I was obsessed with zombie for movies. Really? Zombie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What's your zombie plan? Do you have one? Up north. Up north? It's cold. Yeah, yeah man. Oh, yeah, they won't fuck with you up there, man. Cool. No. We, this is just a little bit off to us. So me and Chuff were away for the weekend. We're out in the countryside, and we sort of, we realised how many, like, horror movie tropes we were betraying. So we were at a cabin in the middle of nowhere. Uh-oh. And like, it was a noise outside, like, and it was dark. So in the country, it's dark. Like, when the lights are off, yeah, you cannot see out. fucking no, anything. So I heard this noise outside. So I obviously went up to the window. I was like, what the fuck am I doing? Mm. I know, and right. then... Uh, we went walking up this random art installation called the Chronic Multiverse, which is shit, by the way. Can I just say? It sounds amazing. It was crap. It really uh, was. It the was Chronic like Multiverse? Yeah. Chronic Multiverse. Oh, oh, right. Chronic Multiverse. Is what it was like, it was Chronic like, Multiverse. Like, it was yeah. Dr. Dre. Uh, it, was like, <laughs> it was this weird art installation in an old quarry that was meant to be like solar systems and shit, but it just it seemed really desolate. Mm -hmm. And like all the hills were just gravel that had quite clearly just been like pushed up. Um, together, so that seemed really trippy. Like we're in the middle of it, looked kind of like um, Wicker Man type shit. And then the last one, we went up to this place called One Lockhead, which is the highest village in Scotland. It's an old mining village, oh, God. and like it, it was like, like there's all these ruins and shit. And I put photos off my Instagram, like these like desolate looking buildings. And we thought it was like an old factory, but no, it was just like a burnt out building. So we walked past this, walked through the tiny village, to get back to the car, and this pissing down grey day. I seen one person like close their curtains. Oh no! And I was just like, "Let's get the fuck out of here before <laughs> we get raped." Like I'm that? not being funny. This is going hills have eyes, Scott. Like, yeah. like, and we walked up because you like you could have went on a tour of one of the lead mines. And as we walked up, I was like, "What the fuck are we doing? Let's like, get the fuck out of here." Why would we do that? Like, yeah. Why am I paying twelve quid to go down a mine? <laughs> You're not from around here, boy. Exactly. But that's what was like, we were just ticking off all these things not to do. <laughs> we're walking out. We walked around a fucking graveyard. Oh no, uh, dude. Fucked up. Still, you were at a loss for things to do there. <laughs> well, to be fair, the graveyard was, we went there, and just before we went, there was a place called Sankar. Actually, shout out to Sunnyside Lodges, which is a place we stayed. It was fucking amazing. Yeah, it looked nice. Um, but we, we found that just before we went, Megan's granny told us that she was actually christened in the church in Sankar. Oh, really? So Megan's great-great-granny and granddad are buried in that cemetery. 
and we never knew any of this before we'd booked it. Mm. So we tried, had a wander around to see if we could find where they were where they were laid to rest. But it was just a nice wee moment. Oh, that's cool. But uh, yeah, shout out to Sanka. Uh, but aye, yeah, horror movie tropes. We've fucking done them all. Still here, baby. Damn right. Can't fuck with me. Saying that, most of the ones didn't have like a hot tub, which was nice. Yeah, hot, hot tub time machine. Oh, I can't do anything. I've, I've decided now as well. I can't do anything without a hot tub. <laughs> Is that it like, now? Everything's life's over. Everything's like it's like you get spoiled with it. We'd wake up in the morning. So what do you want to do? Hot tub. Just sit in the hot tub. Start the day off in the hot. And tub. then it was like pissing down with rain at night. So like it was sitting in the hot tub had a cover over it. Ah, speakers in the hot tub. Set up the iPad on the table. Chucked on a film. Tan some gin. Lovely. I was raw. We're gonna get really baked and sit in a hot tub. See what that's like. It's meant to like like increase it as well because everyone told me like because we were drinking. I said careful how much you drink because the heat apparently gets you drunker. Oh, wow. I'm saying that I didn't notice that the first night we tanned like half a bottle of gin and I felt pretty fucking buzzed. Like more buzzed than I thought I would have done. You're just floating there, aren't you? Essentially. Oh, it's beautiful. Half a bottle of gin is a lot though. Yeah. No, oh, not for big Papa Pump over here. No, there you go. Between two of us. <laughs> oh, okay. I thought you said on your own. No, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, later, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Eventually, yes. I drink all of it. <laughs> so, can we go back to your bird murder? Yeah. So after <laughs> after the the second corpse was uh, was picked up, uh, my youngest daughter Sienna proceeded to kick our asses uh, in in mini golf. Dominated us. She beat me by like uh, five strokes. <sighs> Small yeah. people with small clubs, that's what it is. Yeah. But it was funny because she was just, just she was like just knocking a man and then like just like walking away looking at stuff and me I'm sweating them. I'm like, fuck, I, I gotta knock like, these in. Too casual. Like, <laughs> too casual. Hudding the cute hudding this, the the club lining up, just like that lean slightly to the left. <laughs> When I, when I play there, I go straight to the boot of the car and get my 200 quid putter out, and that's what I fucking play with. Man. I play with the Odyssey putter. Obdi else has got this fucking plastic thing. Like, like, nah, nah, nah. Yeah, I paid 200 quid for that putter, mate. Get the use of this boy. <laughs> yeah, then we, then we went into, we got, I think you get like 50 balls for like, it's like four pounds or something like that. And so <laughs> there was there was a dad, there was a guy there with his son, like, and they looked like they were dressed apart. Like they were there to like knock balls out of there. And the guy was like, oh, that's my boy. At one point when we walked in and he was just like, just crushing them and then me and my daughters come in next in like the stall next to them and we're fucking laughing around there's tees flying out into the fucking that onto the green the worst <laughs> and, and they, they, they made, packed up and got the fuck out of there they were like nah we're not hanging next to this yeah, riff raff you're try, when you're trying to practice and you've got kids screaming and tees flying and balls getting battered off the wooden bit <laughs> oh yeah you I see that, that. <clears throat> Doosh, doosh. And it one. sounds like the, the noise. I don't know what the wood they've got in the and like to separate the bits out, but it sounds fucking bang. Yeah. The worst thing, do you know the worst thing about going to the driving range is like obviously I go there a lot, so I'm working on my game, so I'm working on something, but the worst thing in a driving bay is a wasp. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, they're always because there. Fuck wasps. W- w- what's the first thing you're you doing? Swing you're at swinging it. a club. <laughs> so oh, if you don't shit. even know that that geezer's <laughs> floating about behind you and you're swatting him and you don't know he's there. Suddenly, Dead. you know, you've got one buzzing about. It's getting a bit angry. I fucking hate Always watch. take a towel in with you. Why? Like a little towel. Just don't whap it. That way, if it flies past your head, you can whap it to the deck and then stamp on it. Mm. That's a trick. Or try and bat them to the deck. It's talking about... It's the worst thing. One starts flying about you like that, trying to fucking... You can't think about anything else. No, that you little can't. fucker flying about. I want, to, I want to shout out to the, the Perthshire uh, Beekeeping Association, just off topic quickly. Ah, the bee bee. On the bees. Uh, well, fucking, well, uh, I was having a fag the other night, and I seen there was these two bees just cutting about the top of my, my, my back door. Mm-hmm. And I was like, that's a bit weird. And then next night, exact same. And then I looked up, and they were going in behind the light just above my door. And I remember seeing something on Twitter that it's swarming season. Oh, so it's just as they're coming into the warmer months... The hive sort of breaks up until they can find like a an adequate place for the hive, yeah. and then they all join back up. Mm-hmm. But obviously, I didn't want a hive cutting a boot at my fucking house. We, we don't want your kind around here, but bees. I was, I was, but I didn't want. Obviously, I know how important bees are to the, the ecosystem. So I was like, right, yeah. I think I want to do this. I googled Perthshire bees. <laughs> Got this email straight back for this guy, like <laughs> waiting for it, right? Yeah, he's like, sitting there like <laughs> has to be one soon. This, tell this guy was social because he was just like. Hi, got your email. Where are you? <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. I was just like, all right, age st- location. I was like, all right, Dave, let's just wind it back a bit. Yeah. <laughs> but then, uh, so he was really helpful. I was like, look, I've seen a couple of bees. Don't want to like, cause any hassle. I was like, if, if there's going to be loads of them, I'd rather I've got a small kid. I know bees aren't likely to attack, but if my back door is right below where their hive is, they might think they're in danger. Mm. And it's the only door we use. So mm. any chance you can help me out? And he's like, uh, oh, don't worry about it. They might just be minor bees. These things, or was it mason bees? They're called. Yeah. So they're like hardly ever sting. They're just like worker bees, basically. Because it should go in a couple of days. It'll be fine. Another person's like, because uh, I'd put 
the title. I don't know what to put in the subject. Header. I bet the guy was raging. Eh? You've got two, just two bees flying at your door, and you've got this guy out on the phone. <laughs> He's come all that way. He looks no, he never came. This was over email. Me. This was over email. He's like, we're just going back and forth. He was really good, but I'd obviously, it obviously went out to everyone on the distribution list, and like I'd, my subject header was possible swarm because I didn't know what else to put. Oh, for it fuck's sake, George! It's so <laughs> over dramatic. <laughs> the beekeepers, aren't they? That's why he said, "Like, where the fuck are you?" Because he's like, yeah. "Killer bees." But as I'm saying, I was like, "Look, I don't have to know if it's if it's anything. I've noticed a couple. I don't want loads to come about my door." But the next person's like. Hi Jordan, just got your email. I highly doubt it's a swarm. I was like, look, mate, I've got better things today. I'm not a beekeeper. <laughs> I don't know the fucking lingo. Can you help me? I know. I was like, came hey, what? Dave, the weird cunt who wanted to come in to be my pal. He was much more helpful than you, <laughs> Susan. So you can fuck off. <laughs> but they're, uh, they're a tough, tough bunch of crack. The PBA. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good, yeah, good squad of boys. Just, so right, good, 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 cunts of uh, good. They're a good squad of boys once you get to know them. Eh? <laughs> like, you find a good hive. They're, they're mates for life, man. Like, honestly. <laughs> Can't be calling them out for two bees at your door, mate. Well, that's, no, I didn't want. Guy it, comes it, with his net and all his well, stuff. So I, I, I read him. He grabs it with his finger, like, all right, I'm getting out of here. I read the article about swarm season, and yeah. basically, they can start off with a couple, but within a few days, you can have fucking rakes. If they decide that's uh, a decent place to have a, a hive, yeah, then they can right. escalate pretty fucking quickly. <laughs> it's a good neighbourhood. It was like a schools are nice. It was like a thing on Twitter saying like, try not to disturb them. If you see a hive and it's not like interrupting your day to day life. <laughs> just leave it the fuck alone Yeah, but I was like I'm not a fucking massive beehive cutting about my back door nah. it's just at that, that moment you know when you, you go and you google it and then you start to panic it's like self diagnosis yeah. so, what yeah. did I do with a couple, yeah. <laughs> what did do with a couple of bees oh I have cancer <laughs> fuck <Yeah. laughs> where did I get that you're going to die in five minutes <laughs> oh fuck Yeah, I, I had well, a wasp nest in my, in my old house and that was the fucking worst did you get out yourself no I, um, <laughs> I lived four flights up and it was like outside the window on the slant Yeah, and you could see it my girlfriend pointed out and it was like a big lump in the roof. When the landlord and they were like, ah, please don't die soon. <laughs> like, I in three months. Yeah. Like, me, me or them? <laughs> yeah. There's like this was inside my flat, like go, sneaking through the window somehow. And it's like they were like, ah, it's fine. They're little bastards, wasps, say. Eh? Like they're just And landlords. That's my worst nightmare yeah. to be like walk into a room, say like a room like this, and the door just like <laughs> closes behind me and there's a wasp bike there just hanging in, like a saw game uh, mm -hmm. that would be like my fucking worst nightmare I, uh, I remember listening I think on the worst day. nightmare on I the, keep thinking that fucking flies wasp now. I was me listening too. to the Johnny Vaughn podcast and some guy had like yeah this old Victorian house and they had this massive wasp nest in it and like the way the house was built and the way the nest went in no one could touch it so they just boarded the fuck out of the roof yeah. just shut it down might as well and I then what, they, the place what they did to get out of it is with the, some exterminator eventually got in touch with them and they vacuumed all the wasps out they just start looking I want to see that an vacuum. industrial vacuum into the room and just like off uh, Wasp and Gromit with the bunnies <laughs> but with wasps <laughs> I, got, I stood on like a wasp in Spain once and like right in the bottom of my foot and like I hit the deck oh, like the yeah, pain was just like fucking instant and like I looked at it because it was dead on the floor but like Fucking thing, like my bottom of my foot was like in agony it's for like a bit too long. Lego pieces, <laughs> <laughs> Fuck that. little bastards, nature's bastard. I read Scary. an article last year. They do, they do perform some tasks that are kind of vital to the ecosystem, but yes. not as much as bees. The though. reputation definitely like precedes them. I, like, is. This is mere Facebook science. There was an article last year because it was obviously so sunny and rakes of folk from the beer gardens, and folk were getting right into their dark fruits. Apparently there was a, a string of drunken wasps. Ah, oh, wow. And it just like they would fly into like a kind of the dregs of a pint of strongbow or and like, the sugar and that, and they would fucking drink it. Well, and then they would just be flying about stinging folk because these wasps were fucking steaming. That, that's <laughs> why they get angry at that time of year. It's because Stella. they're they're feeding on a <laughs> lot of <laughs> fermented Tonic. sugars and things like that, which essentially is alcohol once right. it ferments. So that's why they're flying about because they're half cut all the time. Mm. Little Whether bastards. They, so. Yeah. I'm sure Ali Cook will have some feedback for yes, us once he hears like, yes, that. Ali, I've still got no Wi Fi in here, bro, so I can't fact check. He's that egg, he's that wasp place. You'll pull me up for, for long, so. Uh, <laughs> one, uh, one more thing, and then we'll get into uh, sports, of course. <sighs> Uh, and then what are we watching to and listening to? Oh, what up, bro? No, as well. We got a bunch of stuff to do, so we'll move on quickly. Sorry. Well, we better roll through this shit. Uh, We've been rolling yeah. on. So let's talk about have you ever ordered anything that was delivered by Yodel? Yes. Yes, you have, mm, right? Well, know. I've ordered things and there has been deliveries. Yeah. So do you have, um, uh, you know how they have like that, it's like an app or like a web page, a web app where you can follow where the driver is. Yeah. It's like you have 60 stops until he comes and drops you off. Oh, or yeah. Whatever. Yeah, so that's cool. All right. So we were kind of planning our day on Saturday around this. We went and walked the dogs and we had like 38 stops left. He was no place close to Medvin. Mm. So we were like, let's just go into town. I had, I had to meet Billy, actually drop off my football helmet. Mm. Um, and then we were, we were going to get some food, and then we were going to fuck back off the Medvin. 
So then we were kind of driving down over by, what's that uh, that gym over there? The Body Academy? Body Academy, yeah. Yeah, we were driving down by there, and we kind of like hit them at the offset, like the intersection. It was a Yodel van. So I was like, yo, check the app, check the app, and let's see if it's if it's him. Run him down. We ran up on him. We nipped that <laughs> shit. <laughs> Andy, I'm nipping, bro. I thought you'd be more excited. <laughs> I, I, I read this awesome. in the notes, and I was like, that's fucking impressive. So is is that creepy? The guy was a little, was a little off-putting, and Connie was like, you kind of ran up on him a little aggressive. <laughs> I was like, like... I see I've got images of Mike just like... <laughs> Stopping his car yo. in front of him on the jokes. Like, yo, what's up? You got my shoes? <laughs> <laughs> got my fucking parcel. Let me get those shoes. Let me get that package over there too. No, but is that is that bad? Should you just wait for him to deliver it? Or it was a fantastic tactical move. You seized the opportunity. You Jeez struck it. like a cobra. Like I am <laughs> ever so proud of you. A black I mamba, it. some may I'm say. Black, I read it and I was just thinking, that's a fucking genius. Yeah. Right? it was funny because Connie yeah. was like, uh, she pulled over. She was like, oh, I can't get out here. So can you go do it? Because she just didn't want to get out. Yeah. She's like a fucking mouse, you know. So I was like, yeah, I'll I go do it. That one, did you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was fine. You fucking get in the car. I was like, I'm the man. I'll go do it. Of it. So I went and I walked back there and I was like, I was like, I have a package I think you're, you know, you have. The guy didn't even ask for ID or anything. He was like, what's the address? And I told him the address. He's like, oh yeah. I was like, you can go get it. And I was like, oh, all right. You can just guess. <laughs> yeah. So he gave it to me and then as I'm walking back, I look in the car and Connie's like laughing her ass off. She's like, I can't believe you just did that. And I was like, thank Andy. <laughs> <laughs> but thank me first. <laughs> <laughs> So w- would you would you do that? Would you run up on the yodel man to go get your stuff? Well, yeah, we had, we had, we had something sorry. similar. Like Megan was getting something delivered to her work, and like it said, went on the app. Like we waited for like ten minutes after she finished, mm-hmm. and it said the guy like hers was the next stop, and we checked it, and the guy was like parked like two streets over. Yeah, and we went and got him, and it turns out he just got lost. But then the awkward bit was that he had to walk us back to our work because his, on his little handheld thing, mm-hmm. he had to be in a certain distance of the address so we could check it off to say that he'd actually visited. Oh. So that was like sort of like walking down with this random delivery guy. That was, <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I've got to say, man, I was super impressed when I read you did that. Yeah, all right, yeah, I'm good. Big up, Michael. Glad to help you guys. sometimes they can be assholes, let's be honest. Like, yeah. the only guys that there's some people out there who just want to fucking be there. I expected him to be an asshole, yeah. You, know, I said, you think they're spreading so much joy. Yeah, but delivering stuff. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we well, I remember in Glasgow when we were waiting for like baby furniture, like the Black car. Mm. Yeah, we were waiting for it, and I, I remember going home like after the end of the day, and it was just lying at the front door. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, not even hidden. Oh, like, at the yeah. front door, and I was yeah. like, anyone could have fucking taken that. That's like two hundred fifty quid, five hundred quid. Okay. Yeah. That's because I'm vegan. (laughs) He thinks we're friends. Yeah, Yeah, I I, I had uh, a story. I'm safe here. We're we're fighting a fly here. Uh, I had a story about that a couple weeks ago where I had uh, some beer delivered and he just left it right in the front door, right in the the busy street. He's like, oh, thanks a lot. Yeah, that's great. You see all the time in like America was like, People just stealing shit from from doorways. Yeah, all the time. I love those pranks where people like do that on purpose and they put like, Glitter bombs (laughs) (laughs) and just explode. Yeah, it's like there's a video going around of some guy who did it at Christmas last year or something. And he just puts like this big glitter bomb with like video cameras on it and just films people like taking it from the house to their cars. And like, it has the tracking device and everything, so he knows about exactly where to pick it up and just to put it back. Yeah. And say, like, oh yeah, just like this guy's like in his car, opens up, thinks he's got like, I don't know, like an iPad. Yeah. And just glare all over his car. <laughs> I was like, you fucking deserve that. Yeah. Hell yeah. Like, Clean that shit up now. Yeah. Uh, you, you can't be annoyed at it, really. You'd be like, ah, oh, well, I'm a dick. So, you know. <laughs> well, let's fucking do it, Mike. Okay, we're going there first. Let's do it. That sports. Will sports. <laughs> uh, let's get ready to I just want to say, uh, with sports, though, it was funny because you put in mo- all of the stuff in there, basically, and you talk about two different football things, and then the la- third one is, I fucking love football, and the third one is Celtic Pish. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I was talking to Davey O, uh, staunch, 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 staunch Ranger Mr. supporter. Mr. Staunch. Is and he was like, you know, he's like, don't let any, I think he was probably hinting at you, he didn't say you directly, but he was like, don't let any Celtic supporters tell you that that game didn't mean anything because it fucking did. They all mean something. So what do you have to say for yourself we and pish. your team? We were absolutely pish. Don't like, give me I'm that. Like, I want to see tears. No, my look, I was, I was fucking, I was raging yesterday and he's right, like all old firm games mean something, but only to the supporters. 
in the grand scheme of things, it didn't mean much. But at the same time, oh, here no, you go. listen, mm. we're yes, I'm trying to be objective. <laughs> to Rangers fans, that would have meant the world. Mm. Because for the last four years, and I've been bad for it, and I still will be. If we go on a run next year, I'll just be as obnoxious. However, I'm going to be even worse. I'm a, I'm a new Celtic fan. Oh, yeah. But oh. The, the thing is, like, I was, I was a Celtic fan in the 90s. So I know what it was like to win fucking nothing. So yeah, looks like <laughs> you'll get you'll get a load of ra- you'll get a load of Celtic fans. You'll get the staunch Celtic fans on Twitter who are going to be like, ah, I didn't mean fuck all. And look, we've won the league, but at the same time, I would expect every Celtic player to know that an old firm still means something yes. to the fans. Bragging rights, right? Yeah, we're champions. Rangers haven't got any silverware. However, oh, do I in there? Go ahead. That's yeah. what I'm just stating. Far- Nothing I've said here is incorrect <laughs> so far. I think I've been fairly objective. Very good. Andy Mack? Go ahead. Objective ruling? Uh, as things go, <laughs> I'm all right. Trying. I'm so. my best. Look, look I'll, I'll say this. I was saying this today as well because I've got a load of staunch boys sat behind me at work. <laughs> Rangers got their tactics to bang on. Mm-hmm. They choked Celtic out in the midfield. They stopped Scott Brown from playing. Whenever Celtic had the ball, look, there was no space on the pitch. Whenever Rangers had the ball, there was so much space. Celtic couldn't get a pass past the second man. Apart from maybe Johnny Hayes, none of the players looked up for it. The first goal was shocking defending, but the thing is as well... Two minutes in? Yeah, even if it hadn't gone straight in for Tavernier's kick, the way that Celtic defended, one knock for any person on there, that's going in. The only chance we had on goal was Ollie Burke. If I see that man in a Celtic shirt ever again, <laughs> I'll kick him in his balls myself. Yeah, but he was meant to be the next big hope about three or four years ago for Scottish football. I don't know what it is. I don't know he what's was, happened to him. He was, I've never seen a man disappear into a match more than him yesterday. He was a fucking embarrassment. They all were. Like I said, apart from Johnny Hayes. Rangers got to bang on. Next year's going to be interesting. Celtics board need to step the fuck up and actually show why well, we are financially dominant over them. Mm. And the fact of the matter is we've managed to get by without spending too much money the last few years and that's managed to do it. However, Rangers have shown in the last well, the last two games that the only team that we've conceded goals to was in December and then January. That was the first time we'd conceded a goal since the game against them in December. Mm. They step up. The reason that Celtic won the league is they scored something like 22 goals in the last two minutes, so we would keep a, a level of consistency, whereas Rangers stepped up against Celtic, which is fine. However, you win leagues by playing that way in every game. Yeah. And what I'm saying is next year is going to be very fucking interesting, unless Celtic's board put their hand in their pockets and invest in the team, invest in a decent manager. Now, I'm not saying I'd be upset if Neil Lennon got the job, yeah, who's the, other, who's the other choice? Uh, there's no one officially at the moment. But I think it'd be it'd be. There's talks uh, about like Jose Mourinho. He can but, fuck off. Yeah. I don't want him really. Anywhere. I yeah. don't want him anywhere near my fucking club. If you speak to like Celtic supporters, they but, fucking like, hate that. Uh, but I think we need to invest, and Celtic have coasted, and that's been fine financially, business wise, because Rangers tactically are doing well, and they're doing what Celtic have done for a lot of years. In the last few years, get boys on loan, get boys on the cheap who are going to be big things. If you look at the Champions League final. Virgil van Dijk and uh, Victor Wanyama and Andy Robertson, even though he never played for Celtic, those two boys are big players for those teams and are now playing in the biggest stage in European football. Mm-hmm. Celtic need to actually put something <laughs> in this. But I, I will say this, all credit to Rangers. They fucking deserve that one. There you go. All no right. excuses. I'm new to football and I love it. I'm not going to lie. I've always been American football or I've recently last couple go. of years hockey. Like American football has always been my thing. Hell yeah. You're a... 49ers, 49ers, fortunately. So you you in the 90s, the like, this is me now, 49ers, we won fuck all. We're talking about being new at football then, Mike's point was that he says he fucking loves football. And I'm, I'm, t- I'm thinking it's about after those two games last week. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I, I've read that after those two games. Someone said on Twitter that those two games... Sorry, I'm going to start over. Those two games were two of the best games I've ever seen in the space of like 10 days, I think it was. Yeah. Uh, I didn't watch either of them, but what what happened with those two games that made them so... So, Barcelona were 3-0 yeah. up from the first leg. Oh, Bar- okay, I heard about yeah. this one. Yeah, All so right. Barcelona, wait, say, Barcelona are a team. Messi is out of this world. Mm. So, you take Messi out of that team, you've still got a really good team, but the thing is, Messi can change a game in his head. Yeah. Whatever team's got Messi usually has the upper hand, and everyone had written off Liverpool. Absolutely everyone. Because 3-0 down, and then they were, they were at Anfield, you know what I mean? So... Be three 0 down in the first leg. Already, yeah. yeah, that's that's pretty much. In any other, ninety percent of games you'll see if you've got that's a three 0 three 0 lead in the first leg is a death sentence for the second leg, and then to go up against Barcelona, 
and score four goals, that's unheard of. Yeah. And it's, it's brilliant. Like, see, you, you don't have to be a Liverpool fan, let's like, say. You just have to be a football fan. See, that's what people love about football. I mean, don't forget that Roma had beaten, had lost 4-1 in the quarterfinals to Barcelona last year, but then beat them 3-0 at home to put them out of the Champions yeah. League. So they've got, they've already got a history of poor form away from home. Mm. Um, what you're seeing there is probably a lot of players on their last legs, guys like Sergio Busquets. Mm. As I always said, I'd much rather Ronaldo in my team than Messi. Come the big game, come the biggest players. I'm not saying Messi hasn't done it in the biggest games mm. he has, but... Um, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Liverpool, Liverpool played really well in the first leg. Didn't deserve to lose the game three 0 So that's why then playing at home, particularly at Anfield, in as big a game as that, because they played so well in the first leg. I think that's what was I mean, always that's, that's the difference. Always that, possible. That's the difference that Messi can give a team. Though, like you say, when I was on Twitter, I didn't watch the first leg, but people were going on about how good Liverpool were playing. Yeah, but Messi stepped up. World day free kick, you know, like, do you know what I mean? So, and then the Tottenham one as well. Like, so I've not got any affiliation with Tottenham, don't really care. But I watched the last five minutes of that game, and they were I was stupid that was the last like 10, 10 seconds, yeah, just pretty much the last kick of the game. The boys scored a hat trick to put them through, wow, yeah, because it was the, the AX fans were like counting down, weren't they? That was, yeah. that was fucking That's true. Get out of there. You know what I mean? It's like just mostly so. Oh, wait, they've things like that. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm bad for it. I don't watch a lot of football that doesn't involve Celtic because I've got no emotional stake. I'm in the saying. game but every now and again you'll watch a game like that which for the neutral is you can't help but get wrapped up in I'm just trying to press the in-laws on my football so, I, mean, I was never in the football a couple of years ago until like the World Cup was it the World Cup last year? yeah this, well, that is, was, this is how new football oh, yeah. I have no idea fucking do Mike was sort of the same yeah, as well. I kind of toned down a little bit the, the, now, the big games yeah. can get I can, like I can tolerate it now I bought a football shirt I've never, I've never owned a football shirt before I was given one. I was getting right in there. I've noticed. I love it. I'm so into it. What football shirt? Celtic shirt. Yeah. Yeah. I got a Rangers. Yeah. All my clients are like, "You fucking wear that work." I'm gonna have to wear it as a vest now and just be like, just to piss people off. Also, Dundee Football Club. I was just going to say, if you didn't say, I was just going to add that I Dundee got relegated. Fucking Dunyers go. Jim McIntyre and Jimmy Boyle have left the club with immediate effect. Oh well, that's a shame. I was hoping they were going to sign lifetime contracts. Never mind. <laughs> on to the next one, boys. Uh, How are United then? Uh, we finished second in the championship. That's so, the playoffs. So, yeah, the third and fourth place will play off. We'll play the winner of that over two legs. Should get through that game, then we'll play uh, uh, St. Mirren, I think, if uh, we get through the first two playoff games. So. It's all right. Mon- it's all right. It's all, right. it's all rigged so that the SPL club stays it's, it's, in it's, it's, it's I said he- that to you last year. It's after heavily the weighted in favour of the yeah. SPL. Because so we, we finished third and it meant that to qualify, well, to get promoted again, you had to win another six games at the back end of your league season. Hmm. Whereas the hmm. SPL team only had to play the two two legs. So. See, I don't understand all this. Yeah, I was trying to get my head around. Like, yeah. See, no. it comes with it because I'm still the same when it comes to like American football. Got him. I'm not super knowledgeable like I, I can watch a game but like when it comes to like the fixtures and the draft and the fucking See, the all draft that, I'm still learning I did the, I did like fantasy football this year and I, oh. I did it really badly <laughs> really <laughs> do you want to play in a league this year, year? <laughs> this, this year hopefully I do a lot better and not trade off my fucking best player uh, like two shit players like the Giants oh no. sorry man. are you a Giants still fan? Still, yeah. oh, it's still oh, Jesus it's still happening <laughs> that enough sports will be fire through uh, is it bra or not time? Bra or not? Bra or not? Yeah. Bra or not? So, we'll go on our list first of all. So, for those of you who have joined us, and maybe some as well, if you don't know bra or not, we will read out some topics that have been sent in by us, sent in by our listeners, and we will decree whether they go in the bra, brawl of fame. Yeah. Or straighten the knob in. The knob in. So, bra or no, first one here. Loud exhausts on bikes or cars? Yeah, bikes, that... yes. Cars, no. Oh, Bikes, okay. understand, because they can save someone's life. Cars are just dickheads. Yeah. Oh, okay, I never thought of it that way. I assume if somebody's, if somebody's modified their car to be louder, they've got a tiny little dick. Mm, yeah. Okay, I've heard that. So that's a no from me. <laughs> Wasn't it obvious? Loud pipes save lives for bikes. That's all I know. Hmm. Never really thought about it, but... You never like in bed and hear. <laughs> That's usually a sound like when I'm coughing or something. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's me after too many schnouts. Um, 
Nah, d- there's no need for like the big ones. Ken, the folk sounds like you got a hole in your exhaust. Mm. Yeah. See if it's see, like, uh, see if it's like a car that's been looked at like a Mustang or something, like an old muscle car. And oh, that looks good. The engine sounds like that because it's working. But if it's just some wee fanny who's souped up his like Renault Five, Ford Focus or something, uh, yeah, yeah, something yeah, yeah. no, <laughs> there's no meant to sound like that, and you can tell it's no meant to sound like that because it yeah. doesn't sound healthy. But it's like if you hear a Mustang getting revved, you're like, oh yeah, beauty. Just like if you hear a Harley getting revved, I mean, yeah. it sounds healthy. Yeah. But like modified wee fannies and the Renault Fives can fuck off. <laughs> That's yeah. I didn't yeah. know the thing about the uh, the the bikes. I never saw of it for like for a safety. It's just, I think it's just more if you're in a car, you can't really see someone. That's true. But if you can hear them, yeah, you're looking. You're not, you're not like, what the fuck's that? I agree. All right, yeah. so for bikes, cool. For uh, so for the purposes cars, of ca- no. cars no. Mm-hmm. Straight in the knob in. Yeah. 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 Cool. <coughs> uh, I put this one in sliders. Yeah, hundred percent. The yeah. No, the little slippery things that folk are wearing. Hundred like percent. Flip flops. Yes. These, these have been oh, yeah. before, I'm sure. Oh yeah, yeah I think so. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, we'll skip on that. I th- one. I think Either way, yes. Hundred percent. Yes. yes. Uh, I'll, I'll go. Yeah. No. No, I'm gonna say. I hate walking on barefoot. Yeah, well, see, I hate walking but I don't want to wear shoes. You know, no, like this is. I should have phrased it better. Sliders in the hoose, cutting a bit of hoose. Yes. Aye, I'm talking about folk who are like cutting about Tesco's. Mm. And oh, sliders. see, I don't want to see monkey toes. Yeah. Nah, I can't do that. Nah, see, there we go. Right, cool. Uh, next one. <laughs> Buying booze for underage kids. <laughs> yeah. Quick, quick story. Uh, <laughs> I was on a school trip. <laughs> <laughs> and my daughters wanted to get fucked up. So we got fucked up. No. Because um, I'm a good dad. I was, this is I was in New Zealand. And before I, mo- before I went to New Zealand, like, um, like, when I was probably from 16 to when I left for 20, 21, I was a you bad drunk. You were in New Zealand at 16? No, from the age of 16 oh, when okay. I was growing up until I moved, when, until I went to New Zealand at the age of 21. Uh, I was a bad drunk. I got, like, violent, and I got yelled and screamed, and I threw up on myself and everything, right? Good luck. So, I was done. But then I, <laughs> so then I was like, oh, man, don't, this is going to come back to me because I pissed off a lot of people off and never got my head kicked in at all. So this is going to come back to me. Hasn't Didn't come back to me. And then I was in New Zealand, and we were walking into this... Uh, this liquor store and there was some kids out front and I knew they were going to ask me for booze. And they already smelled, they already stunk like booze and I was like, oh, they, they don't need any more. They were already stumbling. And then um, the guy was like, oh, uh, oh, Davey Orange checking in. You know he's checking in today. <laughs> and then the kid was like, oh. Congratulations, Squire. He was like, hey, bro. That's, that's my New Zealand hey, accent. Bro. All right, bro. Can you, like buy a, some bu- can you buy us some booze, bro? That's and I was just like, like you're Scottish. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, sorry. Uh, and I was like, no, no, no. And the guy was like, no. Nah. He just kind of grabbed me. He was like, no, nah, no, don't, don't buy anything for them. And apparently we were in a bad neighborhood. I don't fucking know. So we go in there and we go in and get our alcohol. And I turn around and there was like four of them like follow us into the store. And I was like, oh, fuck. And That's so obvious. so the guy is like, now they're like, kind of like holding the guy back from me. Like, not holding him back from me. They're holding him back because he's yelling at me, like, why won't you fucking buy something? I was like, I wish I had Andy there to tell me to nip, but I didn't. And I was like, look, man. I was like, I don't want any trouble. I'm just trying to get out of here. They're pretty big boys. I was going to say, the big fucking and then, uh, Maori or whatever. They were big Maori boys, yeah, yes. scary. So then we, I walked out, and it was more like in the car, too. And I was like, yo, let's get the fuck <laughs> out of here before they break these bottles over my ass tonight. <laughs> but uh, buying alcohol for kids, bro, no. Look, I... F- See if you were, if you had asked me when I was fifteen, I'd say, "Bro, yeah, say, I'm gonna get steam and I need somebody to buy me booze." But there was always somebody who like got a full on beard at the age of fourteen who was just swan in. <laughs> I never and buy them booze, yeah. but like, like I I wouldn't do it because no. it's no, no work. Well, you get fucking jail time for that. Yeah, I mean, jail if, time. It, if it's for my kid, like, say if like when Noah turns eight, like not even turned eighteen, it's like, oh yeah, I'm gonna go a few friends' house or something like that. I'm not gonna turn around and go, "Don't you fucking do that?" Because mm. I did it. Yeah, I could be a hypocrite, but rather, I would rather, rather know he's safe. Yeah. I'd rather buy him a crate of beer rather than him sit yeah. and drink some eighty percent vodka that's yeah. just whipped up than my dad's cup. We've all done that. I mean, I've fucking sorry, mum, but I've been in fields and my fucking pants steaming drunk. Oh. That's that's <laughs> just growing up phone, in Newcastle. I almost phoned my mum and dad at like four o'clock in the morning for Leeds because I got steaming and lost. And my mum and dad's sort of like, what the "Fuck, do you want me to do about it?" Well, you, you remember, it's like when we were growing up, and it's like your mum was thinking you're you're like a sleepover or something, but you're not. You're like alcohol poison in a fucking field mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah like you could die in yeah, like yeah. hypothermia but well, your mum's like oh, she's, he's all nice rapper. when I think about the nick I've been in at fest and yeah. shit like that I'm like came up. I'd like my, I want my boy to have the experience but at the same time I'd want him to have a healthier respect for yeah the, we do it so they don't have to yeah the burn- <laughs> the <laughs> is that the excuse we're using now we've survived <laughs> yeah I think they, they need to have that bad initial alcohol you have to yeah, have that thing. one where you, yeah. you get absolutely off your thing you think well right I'll probably not do that again for another couple of months Start with Andy Mac. Andy Mac, bro, no. 
Uh, yeah, I say bro, I'd be taxing them 20 fags and two cans at the bag <laughs> as well. Like that. No bother. Um, but but now, tax. in my position... Yeah. Oh, yeah, can't do it. Unfortunately, yeah, that would be bad for me. So I have to say no, even though I would say bro. No. <laughs> <laughs> right? no, no, wink, wink, wink. No, no. That's a no from me. No. Uh, I'm going to say no too. It kind of scares the shit out of me. Yeah. yeah. I've got this one here. Right, Primark. And there's a tangent for years, right? So... I was away last week and we might be doing a lot of walking in the countryside, so it was nice weather. I'm not going to be taking my Lacoste with me and getting them wrecked. Mm -hmm. So I went and bought myself a pair of these bad boys. Oh, a pair of Preezies. Oh, wow. Oh, shoes. Oh, wow. Those Can are I, nice. Yeah, man, look. 16 buck. All right. You know these? 16 buck. They've lasted stuff. a week. Somebody called them a, Somebody called them Preezies. Preezies? Primark like Preezies. So I fucking love them. They're comfy as balls and I think they look smart, too. Plus Why I'm not? not no paying 800 quid for a pair of trainers that Kanye West has spunked at his brain. Fuck so, yeah. So just in general, Primark. Primark where? Depends. Okay. On? I mean, I don't know. Like, the jeans are so shit. Disagree. Stretchy denim ones. Oh, uh, yeah. Got a pair of stretchy yeah. down there. They, they are like, I, I'm, I'm a thick set boy from the I'm wrangle, a thick though. king. And like, okay. normal jeans Two literally feet. just don't, they're so uncomfortable and so restrictive to my chunder thighs. Right, thick boys. I'm a wrangler. Though. Thick boys. We'll see. I see. I don't. Thick see, I, I'm too cheap for that. But like, at least I'm not gonna lie. The denim jeans, jeans are comfy bought. as fuck. Yeah, yeah. It's like wearing denim trackies. Yeah, I agree. All right, fair go. enough. It's more like you're not gonna buy a full suit from that, are you? No. They have the option to. I have. Really? I wear a really? full Primark suit to my work. That blue one. That I, I wear mean, for work. work, but not for a while. Oh, you're a full no. Primark supporter. Why are you putting this on here? <laughs> well, actually, the thing is, how you, like, some folk get stick for it. Oh, I, yeah. I, I, I like I like a decent like usually a decent pair of trainers, but if I'm just wanting a pair of trainers for cutting a boot in, yeah, no, if it's, I don't if see it's any for bad. ease, Do you know what I mean, an yeah. Adidas equivalent to these shoes is going to cost me 60, 70 quid. And I'm saying they look as good as a pair of Adidas, but if I'm just wanting them for wrecking... Let's be honest, though, they're on the same level as, you know, those old favourites like Gollas and high techs and... Yeah. You know. high -techs. But the thing is, it's, it's different now. Like you might know, I don't know whether it'll be Walmart. It's not different like, now. <laughs> <laughs> do, you know, do you know what I mean? Like, like cutting a boot, your mum bought you a pair of like in jeans out of George or something when you were a bird. Or Walmart. Jordy jeans, that's yeah. actually. Yeah, they were rank as fuck. Whereas nowadays the, the the materials and the styles are a lot better than they used to be. No, I don't know if it's that, or I just think that there are certain groups of people that. Hold on, how am I going to say this? People just don't give a shit about their appearance and can get away with it. Yeah. So now people are kind of like, oh, well, he's wearing that and he's just wearing it sloppily so I can just wear this and look nice with it. Do you not think that the, the, the choice compared to like Primark 10 years ago is ridiculous? Uh, Do you know what I mean like the, the choice the quality of clothing, the, the quality choice of, the it's quality not made here. in sweatshops anymore. Yeah. Yeah, it's not shit clothing. I, I agree. That's yeah. what I mean. Like, So for what it is... Like, I'm not going to pay 50 quid for a pair of jeans where my fucking arse and thighs are going to rip the arse out of it in two weeks. Yeah. Whereas I'll spend a tenner on two pairs of stretchy denim ones at Primark. They're comfy as fuck. They look no bad. And I'm not going to be broken hearted when the crotch rips out. Yeah. I see. I like good quality denim, though. Ah, well, see, good quality denim. I'm, I'm, a, I'm yeah. a thing for denim. Like, yeah. I don't buy Levi's now mm -hmm. because Levi's, is the quality is shit. Mm -hmm. But places like Edwin's, or I've got two pairs of Edwin's, two pairs of Kojima's. Like Japanese denim, mm -hmm. they last forever. Mm -hmm. I've got a pair. Of, I got a pair of Levi's from 1947. Well, that's what I mean. Ah. So, like, yeah, obviously, if you, you pay more, you'll usually get the quality. But I mean, yeah. for what Primark is? Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you only want it for like, say, if you got a night out where it's like, oh shit, I got nothing to wear. Ah, oh, fuck it, I'll just spend six quid in a fucking mm -hmm. pair. Of, oh, 16 quid. I don't know how much jeans cost these days in Primark. <laughs> Not that much. No, like 20. Well, I'm saying for what it is, especially is. with my prezies, comfy yeah. as fuck. I'm not going to be bored if I'm. If the weather was better when we were away, I would have been wearing these walking up hills and fucking across fields and that. Yeah. I'm not going to be bothered if they get covered in lamb shite or the fucking toe rips off or whatever, because that's what I bought them for. Until you have like three miles into a walk and the yeah, whole shoe explodes. <laughs> that's when the quality, like, oh, maybe I should have bought well, yeah, but, yeah, but like, I will say, Primark corduroy trousers. Oh. 10 mm. out of 10. 10 out of 10. Really? Oh, 100%. You've never worn corduroy. It's, oh, it's beautiful. Do you know, that, 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 suit, that suit I bought for my work. It's comfy as fuck. Mm. And I think it looks dos. And it cost me 60 quid. All right, we're, we're, going, off. Yeah, we're going off. So, yeah. Primark, <laughs> just for what it is, I'm saying You're doing bro. a Primark ad yeah. here. They don't bro. fucking sponsor us. Yeah. Bro. I'll go bra. we got Primark a bra, but the fake trainers is a no. <laughs> They're not fake. They're fake they're real sneakers. Yeah. But they're I don't just see me cutting about with a pair of neck air max or <laughs> neck I'm air gonna, maximums. <laughs> I actually I'm gonna I'm gonna actually I, I completely 
it's just a little bit this. I bought a pair of suit shoes for a wedding from Primark, so yeah. Yeah, you can do That's it. Some I bought stuff from there. I've got, yeah. like, I've got my Lacoste trainers that I love to death, and they look brilliant, but mm. I'm not going to wear them to go cutting about the countryside. Awesome. Yeah. I, my my good friend Eddie was he was go, I think he was going to uh, Costa Rica and he was like we're gonna be like par- swinging through the trees and shit and on dirt bikes he's like I'm not bringing my fucking eighty pound eighty dollar sneakers there I'm just gonna get a couple of pairs yeah. from from okay. Primark and we'll get a couple of pairs of shorts and see it's things like this is keeping Brantano in business with the gollers <laughs> and the fucking high techs no, he, he no. didn't go to Brantano's for a nice yeah, pair man. of Air Max mate nah, you know I, I, mean, I, like, I take and all that shit's coming in now like New Balance and I see ten years ago New Balance was a death sentence we've seen New Balance was awesome. It was like I was in the, high the lost and found in high school when you like forgot to bring your PE kit. Yeah, you You'd be like, like high tech on New Balance. You're yeah. a lessy jumper. You're like cock sport oh, teeth. Oh, right, what's next? <laughs> I really want to see the tracks. Uh, Mitch, Mitch Hunter checking in. Uh, at least MCAT isn't a thing anymore, he says. <laughs> <laughs> Meow. Meow. <laughs> Plant food. I'm glad I didn't um, ever do that. Just grown tomatoes this weekend. All that. <laughs> <laughs> next we got here is using your phone at the urinal. Yeah, phone uh, at the urinal. A urinal? No. I'm not there long enough. No. no. Like, I'm in there getting my slash done. I have a sit-down wheel a lot, though. Sometimes I do have yeah. a sit-down wheel. Sit-down wheel is the best. But if I'm at like, the pub or something, I'm not going to just stand there, like, dick out with, like, my phone in my hand. No, I think that's weird, too. Seen it the other day. I need both hands. <laughs> Whey! Oh! Your old da! He's Your old da has got a big junk. <laughs> <laughs> I need, I need two, one for the tweezers, one for the magnifying glass. <laughs> uh, Got to be able to see it. Love that honesty, bro. Uh, right, so I'm going to say no. I'm going to say no as well. No, fuck I'm, that. No. And I'm addicted to my phone. Right, cool. Uh, yeah. Go to the Facebook class. Big G West. What's up, G West? <laughs> We've uh, touched on this one, but I just thought it was funny the way he said it. fucking love G West. He's like a proper big cowboy. Yeah. Big like, up. Came, is, uh, is it the Kilted Cowboy? Is yes. His oh. Instagram name? We need you, to be friends. You, 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 actually need to hook Fat up cowboy, kill the cowboy. Big ten, is it ten gallon hat or five gallon cowboy hat? He big wears? fucking yeah. stats, oh, man. Oh, big, he was a big D lineman, like one of the biggest, most aggressive guys. Was it? Was it at the the oh, fucking bend don't break the hurricane, the Dundee hurricane Dundee documentary? Hurricanes. Yeah, he was. In, he showed up to the premiere like stats and cowboy you have boots, to. like drinking whiskey, just talking about southern drawl. It was you couldn't not look at him and Unbelievable. Listen to him talk. You'd absolutely He's a large, large guy. man. Let's be friends. <laughs> Jay West anyway. Let's Jay West be friends, took up with, uh, with Sam. Show me attention. Uh, here we go. Those burnt ass morning rolls they sell in the Dundee <laughs> shops. So a well fired roll. Yeah. We we did this already, but I just yeah. thought it was funny it's, that he said it. That, like is that a big thing up here? Because I don't, I don't know. It's my yeah. old man. It's a Scottish thing. I don't know. It's, it's, it's like, oh, it's fuck, I've burnt them. I'm just going to sell them. Sell them on anyway. Yeah. Somebody's yeah. going to. It's a no for me. Anyway. It's a no for me, too. No, it's like, I don't want my mouth ripped open from like, <laughs> with my potatoes gone. I think the rule of thumb is a roll should never shatter. <laughs> you're yeah. Right. If you're, if you're rough, like the Ice King, the next day you're rough or something. You want the last thing you want to do is like bite into something that's going to attack you. You want to like comfort food. Yeah, you want something soft just to to sink your poor wee mouth on it. Because like, I, you know what I mean? Sadly. Like a fucking hard roll. You feel like you've got to take a big bite yeah. in it. You've you got cotton I mean? mouth. The last thing you want is razor blades. And there's fucking crumbs and flakes nah. off the roll everywhere. It's a bloody mess. No, right, pack it in. We're rolling on. So I'm going to say, is that a no from everyone? Yeah. Right, yeah. We'll do one more and then we'll get them watching and listening. Because yes. we've still got smash yeah, things. So the last one we got here we'll do today is oh we've done some football. Uh, Chris Hollins. Shout out to Chris Hollins. He has said oh. boomerang videos. Alright. I don't mind the wee boomerang. I yeah. like a boomerang, like, yeah. Some of them are like some of them are a bit deaf. See Creative. if it's just the, the basic glasses that are just doing a wee wiggle. That's a bit annoying, but like see if there's a good in. Yeah. I'm all I'm all for a good boomerang, like. Yeah, like the golf one. Yeah, or like my favorite one's like I seen one that was like a guy taking the first scoop out of a jar of peanut butter. Yeah, oh, and then I went back fine. and it went back to being smooth. That was just I could watch that all day. I'm into that. All day. <laughs> peanut butter anyway. I think it's just like a poor man's vine, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do it for the vine. Yeah. Did you like vine? Yeah, vine. I was love all. vine. Vine was cool. Love vine, I was, yeah. I discovered a guy called well, no, I didn't discover him, but it was the first time I seen a guy called Dapper Laughs. Mm-hmm. Oh, He's, that guy? Yeah, I fucking love his, his Instagram shit, man. He cracks me up. Because it's just stupid, <laughs> stupid humor. It's just, yeah, it's just lad it's, banner. It's, right. just, it's not even lad banner, it's dad banner. Like, no, it is, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know I mean? Now but he's like, a dad, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but like, that's where I found shit like him. And there's a lot of people who made a lot of money off of it. Like, Hell yeah. A lot of Still money off. They're thriving on Instagram and yeah. on YouTube. Oh, yeah, they're now yeah, YouTubers, they took, yeah. Yeah, they took their audiences <laughs> on to YouTube. Um, I'm going to say bra for boomerangs. I'm going to say yeah. bra for boomerangs. But just going back to Vine quickly, because I know we got to move on. There have been times where I was in tears watching a six-second video. I, I don't even know how they did it. Yeah. It's kind of like I, you don't even have enough time to develop anything, and I'm streaming. Yeah. But anyway, sorry, no, let's go on. So it's a bra. Was anyone bra? Yeah. I'm saying no. You're saying no. Yeah, I'm saying no. Fair enough. Yeah. Wait, what Vine, was it again? Vine Loyal. 
Boomerang. Boomerang. Oh, yeah, I'm saying just, boomerang. I'm, it's kind of the arse just like trying to get a shot or something, just so it's like somebody's just like doing that like, <laughs> over and over again. Like, well, there's, a, fine, there's a fine line. I want to do one of peeing. It's an art, Andy. Andy. A pee one. A poop. Oh, the one you always get. Imagine just going whoop. Straight back up. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. You always get the one. I mean, with... I had to say because that'd be funny. I'm pretty sure that's porn. Like, that may be porn of some type. Ah, if you're into that, oh, so you always get the folk to do the one with the drinks, isn't it? It's like or the clink. It's this one. It's just like that. Yeah, that's what I mean. Uh, yeah, the, the, the up I did that in my kilt last I mean, week. I mean, we'll see it next oh, yeah, week or this week. Oh, hey, oh, oh. Right, we just jump straight into what we've been watching and listening to this week. Do you? Okay, yeah, we can do that. Game of Thrones. Oh. Can't do spoilers. Cause no, I know. I'm not gonna. What have you been watching or listening to this week? All right, yeah. let's do a rapid fire edition. Right, cool. I'll, some, uh, I'll go through these ones. So I done what rewatched Last Train to Busan. Oh, green zombie my film God, set in a train. zombie film ever. That's an 8.5 out of 10. That is one of my favourite zombie films mm-hmm. I've ever seen. Um, I listened to Logic's Bobby Tarantino 2. Oh, how was that? Fucking sensational. Is it good? Yeah, it just it came up on my, like one of the recommended albums one day when I was working from home. Hmm. And I just sat and listened to the whole... I listened to it like three times over while I was doing some work. And mm-hmm. like it was beautiful. I that and his song... Uh, Lunatic. Is it Lunatic? His new song with Eminem. Oh, okay, it's good. Homicide. 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 Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Okay, check it out. Eminem and Logic. I'll give that a seven out of ten. Bananas, really good. One of a really one of the best verses that Slim's done in a long time. Um, and from a retro one, I re-listened to the Darkness's first album, Permission oh. to Land. Solid, solid album. seven, Permission solid seven land. bananas. Uh, production value is great. The music, the musicality of it for like what was considered a jokey band at the mm-hmm. time. They are fucking sensational guitarists, the two brothers, Justin and Dan Hawkins. I remember having to steal that album off my mum because I wasn't allowed to listen to it. Yeah, like, <laughs> it's just filthy. They've got, like, a love song about pubic lice. Like, it's, it's great. Seven bananas for me. So that's my ones this week. Sam, got anything you want to share out? Finishing off Game of Thrones. Uh, there's mixed. I'm not really going to say too much, but it's mixed. I've started watching Chernobyl on Sky. I want to check that's that out. That is so good because yeah. it's... It, it, it just shows how fucked up it was and no yeah. one knew anything was going on. Is it a documentary or is it a... It's, it's like... It's, it's, it's a, a drama. It's oh, okay. A, but so it's, based, like, it's like loosely based on the actual shit that went yeah, down. It's, yeah, it shows like everything that, that led up to it. Or not led up to it, like from the moment it blew up and it's like how no one knew it could happen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's people going on like, nah, you're lying about that. Mm-hmm. And it's like, it kind of just shows how like the mentality back then was kind of like, mm, no, I don't believe that. Yeah. Just because they didn't see it, or well, like I don't know, it's mm-hmm. weird. It's really, 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 really good though. What would you give it? How many have you watched so far? This is only the first episode out this week. What would you give that at a rough score out of ten bananas? I mean, it was at five o'clock this morning after I watched Game of Thrones, so Fair. probably about eight point five. Nice, it was Strong. really good. Anything else you want to shout out? Train to Busan. Train I'm going to watch that tonight. Actually, oh, so good, so good. Are you? Yeah, I was just listening. I don't know because there's a lot of bands that I just didn't a lot of beat down. Like Mercy Blow, big up Mercy Blow. Mercy Blow. Mm. Any, any album you want to give a rating to? Let me see. I listen to stuff in the gym. <clears throat> oh, yeah, I go, I go to the gym now. <laughs> really? Yeah, <laughs> apparently. We'll get, we'll get to that on Thursday. <laughs> uh, oh. It's in French. So, Coupe de Grasse. That's a good album. Coup de Grasse. The Coup de Grasse. Coup de Grasse. That's the one. That's a good album. That's the name of Miles Kane album as well. Is that? Yeah. This isn't. No, if I say that's not Miles Kane. IED and No Zodiac. I know Zodiac on my favorite bands. Same. 10 out of 10 all the time. Nice. Nice one. Mm. Mikey Dots. Only thing I watched, well, there's Lizzo, actually. She's uh, a singer, American singer that Connie put me on to, actually. Uh, she's pretty good. Uh, and uh, we watched a show called Dead to Me. Christina Applegate is in it Ooh, on Netflix. Seen this on Netflix advertising. Very, yeah. very good. It's probably, give it about, give it about a seven. Pretty good. Kind of predictable, though. I feel like um, I knew what was going to happen mm. in the first season, but very, very good. Highly recommend it. Nice. In, in the mid act, what do you got? Uh, I've been listening to a bit of Ocean Wisdom. I've been listening to more Childish Gambino, mm. playing a bit more FIFA in my spare time. Remember, I we talked last week. There was a bit of feedback as well. I was a bit disappointed to hear you relapsed onto the, onto the packs, Back mate. On the oh, no, I don't buy packs. I don't, I don't buy Have packs. Have you transcended that? No, no, but it's like you get your packs as your weekly reward. So it's like I'm sitting there fucking itching till like <laughs> one o'clock on a Sunday. I'm like, yeah, packs, I man. Got two mega packs. Okay, <laughs> let's go. And then I get no boards and no walkouts. And I'm like, what the fuck did I grind for this week? <laughs> um, no, when we talked last week, I said to you in week one, I'd made 600K. Yeah. 
Yeah, week two, I made another 1.2 mil, baby. Oh, mate, I'm Millie, I'm Millie. Two weeks in, we're, we're playing Icon Roy, Roy Keane. We've got Icon Juan Sebastian Veron. Mm. We've got Icon Fabio Cannavaro oh, at centre-back. Booyah! Oh. Honestly, I'm back on the RAPE and <laughs> I'm re-qualified for weekend league. So this weekend, watch hey. out. Honestly, I will make sure you break your controller once you've played my sweat. <laughs> my FIFA fucking <laughs> cutback crossing Swag. sweat. Rip that drip, it son. Is- Definitely getting the dominoes in, on the couch, in the underwear, mm-hmm. playing all weekend. Mate, I had a dominoes last week, and I was yeah. thinking about you because I know how much you dislike it, and I was really disappointed with it. And I'd won in oh, ages, was and I was like... Tell you, man, Mamaris, like, Mamaris, Mamaris is a good pizza delivery. What would you say, Andy, on about um, last night, I'm sure you talked about 1250 TV? Yes. Watch that Sherlock diss track for Zesh. Zesh, aye. Uh, Wow. Fucking hard going, isn't it? Jesus, man. <laughs> right. This is a Glass Region rapper beef with a. He's from Edinburgh. Leaf. Yeah. Leaf, a Leaf rapper calls this, and this track is fucking filthy. I messaged Andy after listening to it. I was just like, is this boy going to be okay? Scottish rap is amazing. But this boy's going to need a miracle to come back because he destroys us. Uh, it was a pretty brutal track, like. I, I, don't, I don't know any of the back tracks. I'm not trying to shout out one guy or another, but this track that I listened to, because I was trying to find the original mm. track that kicked it off. Mm. But Sherlock's reply is ferocious, is the only word I can use mm. to describe it. Ferocious. I'll play it to you afterwards. Absolutely. It's absolute fire. Um, so, no, just to finish up, um, just a little bit of stuff um, and a little bit of FIFA. And I think uh, going into this week, as of Friday, that'll be all my submissions done for the year, boys. So, finally, a bit of coming out the other side. So, That's my I'm probably sure I'll have more to watch and listen to in the weeks going forward. As my schedule now just opens up for the summer, I'll be out in that golf course. Okay. Let's get that monkey sword fight golf day out, boys. I need Sunning to. myself up. All right. Right, so, cool. Yeah, all good. Let's wrap this shit up then. Thank you very much to this week's guest, Samuel Mathias. Thank, Thank you for having me. No, man, good. it's been a pleasure. Yeah, Welcome yeah, back anytime. Oh, man. Thank you for coming. Thank you. No, right. thank you. Well, thank you. All right, let's wrap this up. we got to go. <laughs> Thank you to uh, this week's sponsor, Stevie Max Skate School. Get in touch, Stevie Max Skate School on Facebook. Nicest guy in Perth. All ages welcome. Give my message. Try something new. Peace. Our Patreons. Ali Cook, Andrew Henderson, Cal McLaughlin. You know what I'm going to say here, huh? <laughs> Job 669. Love it. Yeah. Craig McCaffrey, Davey Forrett, Fraser Reevy, Ian Shepard, Nate Black, oh. Rachel. Hi, Rachel. Hi, Rachel. Hi, Rachel. Hi, Rachel. Hi, Rachel. Hi, Nate Black. <laughs> Love you. Uh, Ralphie Roggs, Roddy Beda, and oh, Stosh. Like Stosh. Um, Let's wrap that shit up. We yeah. are on, you can email us, monkeysurfightpodcast at gmail.com. We're on Twitter at MSF underscore podcast. I'm on Twitter at Wagwan Patrice. And we are on Podbean and Facebook, <coughs> Monkey Sword Fight Podcast. You want to shout, shout your stuff out again? Yeah. El Gordo Vaquero. I'll just search up Fat Cowboy. There you go. Uh, I am at underscore M Dots on Twitter. I'm there at Macapella. Good old da. Thank you very much for listening. It is good to be back. Uh, we will come back with another episode next week. Peace. Yeah, 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 yeah. Peace. Bye. Hey!